because Guy knows why preventive care matters. You are why we're reimagining healthcare. To give you more choices, to be there for you, to see you in new ways. Hawaii Pacific Health. Sunday. Hawaii closes out the Outrigger Volleyball Challenge with a match against Pac-12 powerhouse UCLA. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Enjoy more ways to watch your favorite University of Hawaii and local high school sports on TV, online, and on the go. The best of local sports wherever you want it. Only on Spectrum Sports, OC16, and x -Test. Welcome back. We take a look at the series record between Western Kentucky and Hawaii. First ever meeting between these two programs, but that's what makes the relationship between the two head coaches uh, all the more profound, the fact that you had Timmy Chang in his playing days at the University of Hawaii, that time coinciding with really the start of Tyson Helton's coaching career, came in as a grad assistant under June Jones in the year 2000, uh, and then parlayed that into a special teams uh, assistant position for the next three years before moving on and obviously eventually finding his way into head coaching. Yeah, even though he was a special teams coordinator, he was in that quarterback room. He was in the offensive meetings. He is a former quarterback. So he and Timmy have so much in common, so much DNA that they think alike and they are very friendly. But this is the first time, obviously, they've met in a very competitive first quarter. 3-0 Hawaii, 7-16 left to play here in quarter number one. And you see some of the crisscross action in the backfield there as that one is given to Dalvin Smith. Yet another on the receiving end of an Austin Reed pass here early. Yeah, Leonard Lee on the tackle, but there's also a couple other guys. Part of the thing is taking good angles. The other part is wrapping up, getting people to the football. Quick snap here for Western Kentucky. Again, looking towards Smith is Reed. That time incomplete, though, as there was a bit of a hand wrestling matchup between he and Hugh Nelson. Yeah, hand battle. Hugh Nelson, the boundary corner, big, strong, physical, gets his eyes back, and if you get your eyes back and you're battling for the football, you do have the right to become the receiver. So already five different pass catchers for Western Kentucky here having record, uh, recorded receptions in this first quarter. This one is given to Moses out of the backfield, and he is quickly upended along that near sideline. And guess who's back? Pene Pavihi left the game, looked like he was walking off gingerly, but he's back out there, and that is a good sign for Hawaii. Yeah, and fundamentally, the too high coverage, whether they're playing quarters or halves, doing a nice job downfield. So quarterback checking the ball down, and then you're seeing good angles. You're seeing eyes up. You're seeing coming to balance. You're seeing wrapping up. And that's what you did not see last week. And I'll tell you right now, Jacob Euro and the defensive coaches spent a lot of time on tackling fundamentals. And you know how momentum driven this game can be, Rich. And that was one of those games where a few things happened early on for Hawaii. It could have been a different story, perhaps at least deeper into the ball game as that pass is complete to the receiver. But they're going to say that he was out of bounds, incomplete. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Back shoulder fade type of throw, ran out of real estate, but a win for Hawaii's defense. That You're going to see the press out, the eyes trying to get back to the football. Abraham Mimian has to be happy. He was happy last week on the outside. The two corners did a nice job being on that proverbial island. So far, secondary playing well. Michael Matheson was the intended target there that time for Reed. So on to punt is Tom Ellard. End over end punt's gonna hit the turf at the 38 yard line. And it's gonna be scooped up there and down at about the 33, 34. So Hawaii's offense once again to take over here. Still up three, 6.04 to go in quarter number one. song to sing and a story to tell. That's the beauty of life. 
With the right ride, you can go anywhere and do anything. Like the capable CRV, the perfect island ride. New Honda SUVs are on the way, so reserve yours today. See your Hawaii Honda dealer today and tell them Henry sent you. Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker is back with a big, bold taste rolled into 16 inches of foldable crust. It's handmade to perfection with a sweet marinara sauce and your favorite topping. And at 30% larger than our large, the Big New Yorker is only $9.99 for carryout. Bring together your family and friends for a Big New Yorker party. Each pizza is just $9.99 for carryout. The Big New Yorker, so close you can taste it. Only at Hawaii Pizza Hut. Welcome back. Well, the Honolulu Little League team really the field. won the world championship. Ball touched by the receiving team. It's down to further review. They won the championship in Williamsport, getting honored here during that timeout and maybe bringing some of that good juju. Hawaii's offense could use some. Total offense so far, negative three for the Rainbow Warriors. Their three possessions have gone punt, field goal, punt. And on the field goal, they went backwards 20 yards. And maybe their coach, Gerald Oda, actually gave some fundamentals about knee band and changing direction to the defense because they're tackling better, they have better angles, and uh, a good pregame speech by the world champion baseball team would be nice. All right, so you may have heard the head referee, Christian Watson. They're taking a look at the previous play prior to the timeout. Uh, let's check in with our Spectrum Sports Rules analyst, George Gusman. George, what's happening here? I think there was some, uh, some touching, but it appears as though maybe um, receiving, it was pushed into the, uh, into the ball, if anything. I don't see anything right now. They, they may be looking to see if this ball touched. No, it didn't. There's a great there. It looked like the ball changed, but I don't think that touched 14 on That's the That's definitely down. what they're looking at, though, right? As yes, if the Hawaii's receiving team right. touched it prior. Then it'd be a live ball. Correct. Prior to the recovery there, but. And the football seemed to go a different way, but I didn't see any contact with somebody in a black jersey. That end zone camera certainly did not appear to show a touch. But that's why you give that poison call. You got to get those gunners away from the football. If you know you can't catch it, it's poison, poison, poison. All right, so we kind of asked you this earlier, George, but one of the sort of points of emphasis, if you will, for the officials this year in college football to try to expedite this replay system and, and these reviews overall, these are taking a little bit of time here so far tonight, but what goes into that idea of trying to speed this process up? It's just being more efficient. Um, you know, people want to see things move quickly, decisions made uh, quicker, and um, I'm surprised that this wasn't looked at during the uh, TV timeout. But again, uh, it may be they were just alerted to it. Hmm. At this point, I don't see any. any on the field stands. First down Hawaii. I didn't see any angle there. We needed a better angle to see if there's any touching. And neither did the replay officials. And so, yes, Hawaii will take over. And they didn't want to interrupt the celebration of the Honolulu Little League team. So, of course, they, they couldn't announce the review during that, right? That is much more important. Okay. <laughs> but that, right. there was the second bounce that was close. But uh, again, if there's no evidence, just stay with the call on the field. So first and 10 here for Hawaii, the ball at the 34-yard line. As mentioned, the Rainbow Warriors, they need to start getting some positive yardage on offense. Negative three yards total so far in this first quarter. Also, if you're just joining us, Joey Yellen getting the start. There was some uncertainty as to which quarterback would start this game. Braden Shager getting the start last week against Vanderbilt. Joey Yellen did see some time in that second half. Started off hot, then cooled off a little bit. He so far is 0 for 5 in passing. And he gives it here to Diedrich Parson, and Parson leans forward. He'll get positive yardage of about four yards, but hey, surprise, surprise, penalty flag down on the field. I'm not sure that... Hold the amount of plays. Offense, number 85. 10-yard penalty. 
Base first down. Percentage of flags has to be somewhere around 50% in terms of the number of plays. This has been a sloppily played first quarter. There you see some of the action there on the Diedrich Parson carry. Point of attack, Caleb Phillips here at 85. Got to keep your head up, got to move your feet. And if you're going to hold, it has to be inside that breastplate. Yeah, this has been all too familiar for Hawaii in this opening frame. They've been moving backwards due to a slew of penalties. Here's Parson out of the backfield. Another thing he brings to the table, part of his versatility. He is very proud of the fact that he's a guy you can hand the ball off to, but you can also use him as a weapon out of the backfield, catching the pass. Yes, from a production standpoint, I mean, he can line up and empty as a wide receiver. He has very good hands, obviously good vision, good toughness, good balance, and you're right. That gives defensive coordinators problems because personnel-wise, you can still go to that empty uh, ghost formation with 31 in the football game. Had 28 catches for 279 yards last season. Second and long here for Hawaii. Yellen back to throw. Has a little bit of time. Goes on the crossing route to Caleb Phillips. And Phillips, who the coaching staff said was going to likely see a few more snaps here this week. They felt like maybe they relied too heavily on the starting tight end, Jordan Murray. They felt like fatigue may have played a factor in the second half in some of the route running and uh, incompletions. And so they wanted to try to ease up the load and give Caleb Phillips a few more opportunities. 78 offensive snaps. Jordan Murray took the majority of that. They want to get Caleb Phillips some reps. That's a nice job of checking it down underneath to that drag route as the vertical routes try to clear the safeties out. And the first completion Coming on this drive for Yellen to Parson. And then the completion to Phillips. And how about back-to-back -back Caleb Phillips? This time it gets Hawaii into Western Kentucky territory. Western Kentucky had two blitzers inside A-gaps. Offense doing a nice job picking it up, but Yellen did get hit. But give credit because that was the best throw of this early evening. Good job, Caleb Phillips, bending that semen along the hash. 22-yard gain there. Here's James Phillips on the bubble screen. And he's able to elude a couple of would-be tacklers and drags a few more, in fact. Good run after the catch that time by James Phillips. The, the diminutive one showed power there, showed grit, showed the ability to continue to move his feet and really got the sidelines excited, getting this fan base excited. Look at Hawaii trying to run some tempo here. The give is to Najee Bryant Lele, 5'10, 210 pound junior from Orlando, Florida. Had four carries for 21 yards against Vanderbilt last week. Uh, he had gone last year by the name Najee Bryant, added the hyphenated Lele because that is representative of some of his Polynesian ancestry. And that was an indication of him sort of buying into this brotherhood mentality that Timmy Chang and this coaching staff have brought. And so he is now wearing that proudly as part of now his namesake here. And he does get the first down. We have some premature movement once again. And All penalty start. flags. Offense, number 75, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And that's going to be El Manning. Next comes the Polynesian sleeve tattoo. And, uh, you know, the brotherhood is coming strong. Yeah, kind of the, the Thomas Sheffield one. Thomas like Sheffield. With, with the actual brotherhood tattoo on the forearm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about be belonging to the brotherhood, you got to get the sleeve. I mean, there's no more of a commitment than that, right? Ask Chris Brown, ask some of these other coaches. Let's go, DP. Penalty on Il Manning, one of the Let's most go, experienced DP. on this offensive line. We saw Yellen keeping on that one, and he gets wrapped up in the backfield. Khalif Halasi was first to him. And so, again, Hawaii this time going backwards. This is a jailbreak, and I mean, they got guys coming off the edge, but not a real good decision to pull that ball. You do not want your quarterback with that ball unless it's a crucial situation. When he's reading that end man on the line of scrimmage, give it inside. So second and 19 now. We'll call it second and 20 here for Hawaii. Back close to midfield. Yelling chased. Didn't have much time, was looking in the direction of Jordan Murray on the near sideline. But more pressure applied by Mike Allen. He has been busting free on a few occasions here so far in this first quarter. Yeah, they're running some stunts. This is only a four-man pass rush. 
Well, actually, it's five. They're coming off the edge. Good pick up by Diedrich as they slide the line to their right. He's responsible for the left outside rusher. But pressure is coming early and often. Offensive line going to have to continue to pick up stunts, dogs, blitzes, zone dogs. So it is now third and 20 here for the Bows. Yellen, a little bit of time. Nothing downfield. He's going to fire on the run now, and it is nearly picked off. Or is it picked off on the ricochet? He's rolling on the field the interception. First down. And they are going to say that it was an interception. And I was just about to say, great throw. You're going to see Yellen right here step up, buy some time, go to his left, and deliver the ball right into the hands of number 18. He juggles it. Not a good throw, not a good decision. Ball was wobbling out. So the initial INT opportunity was presented to CJ Jones, then it bounced around like a pinball until BJ Wagner was Johnny on the spot, able to come up with the INT. The tip drill, the old tip drill. That was a poorly thrown football. The toughest thrown football is a right-handed quarterback going to his left on a full sprint, but that ball came out and it was not tight. It wobbled, it floated and gave Western Kentucky a good chance to make that initial interception. So a quick change as the Hilltoppers offense back on the field. First and 10 ball at the 32. And it's a quick toss to the far side. David Davis, and he's iced out of bounds after a solid game. Davis comes over from Oregon. He is a Bolitnikoff watch list guy, but in his time at Oregon, Mario Cristobal, who was still there, called him the most unselfish guy I have ever coached. And we talked to some of the Western Kentucky uh, coaches, and they agreed. They said this guy came uh, to our campus, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and basically just did anything we asked of him. He is the most supportive teammate you will ever see. And they said what's ironic is the more he helps others achieve, which is one of his priorities, the more he seems to achieve. And so it's kind of that two-way street. They said Daywood Davis is the guy when it comes to that stuff. Braden Shager starting to get loose on the Hawaii sideline. Uh, hints at a possible change at the quarterback position if and when Hawaii gets the ball back. Oh, how about that pop? An incomplete pass is the ruling. Uh, that was a devastating reaction here. Oh, it feels an incomplete pass during the play. Holding. Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty. Or may first down. So Mark Good picks up the penalty, but how about Pene Pavihi saying hello? Yeah, and Jonah Kahavai Welch also applied that pressure, doing a nice job of beating protection. And you're right, Pene Pavihi with that hat on that football. And we were talking about just some of the circumstances last week, right? Panepa V had a would-be interception basically bounce off of his chest plate. Had he held on to that, it would have been a short pick six. It would have been 14 nothing Hawaii. Things like that can change at least the course of a game, certainly. Uh, and then you had the two crazy fumbles, right, where Diedrich Parson gets it popped out of his hands. They're caught on the fly. Both return for touchdowns. And, and those are morale fracturing type of plays. Yeah, they always say four to six plays can change the complexion of a football game. You just mentioned three of those, and they all went uh, the way of Vanderbilt. So you're exactly right. That game would have been 14 nothing. There would have been a different vibe on the sidelines in terms of how the defensive backs are playing. It would have been just a, an incredible difference. That was a huge football play. They could be a drop down section. Second down and 15 here for Western Kentucky. Reed. That is a bullet, and that is enough for a first down inside the Hawaii 40, connecting with Daywood Davis, Jojo Forrest on the coverage, but that was a frozen rope throw by Austin Reed. Yeah, and it's another back shoulder play, and these are tough to defend for your defensive back, especially if their backs have turned and you got a big target out there that's coming back to the football. Schematically, they're not going vertical on the fade route. They're doing a lot of comeback routes. First and 10 from the 35. And this is a first down run on the handoff. The give is to Davion Irvin Poindexter, 5'11", 200-pound redshirt junior. Another transfer, spent three years at Indiana, but had 49 yards on the ground. And 
kind of catch versus Austin P last week. Western Kentucky quickly back at it, trying to up the tempo. You know, that previous run saw a couple of missed tackles, and you gotta see that. This game of college football is horizontal. You gotta have good angles, you gotta get people to the point of attack, but Hawaii has to tackle better. They have thus far in the first quarter. That's one of the first missed tackles we've seen. So second and 10 here. 26 seconds left here in quarter number one. Western Kentucky held scoreless to this point. That a bit of a surprise. Hawaii's only been able to muster three points, though. And a flag coming out. Could be offside. The throw to the end zone incomplete. Tried to lead Michael Matheson. He got a paw on it. Wasn't able to haul it in. Yeah, Panay Pavi trying to time that blitz up, but he Offside. Defense, number one. Five-yard penalty. Main second down. You work on that timing of the cadence. You try to time it up where you can beat protection. He's coming from depth at that linebacker position, but he definitely encroached the line of scrimmage. You're going to see this throw a seam route, quarters coverage. The skinny post by the X receiver. So that brings up second and five. See the time, 22 seconds. Fake handoff to Irvin Poindexter. And Reed's going to take off. Reed's going to get the first down. He runs out of bounds inside the Hawaii 10. And that's going to be a first and goal situation coming up for the toppers. And they still have 14 seconds here in the first quarter. They had good coverage downfield. You're going to see that underneath fake step up in the pocket. Probably could have took three or four more yards, and every yard is so valuable. As you mentioned, time left in this first quarter. And so that will end, that is the end. quarter number one. The first quarter. So hey, it was sloppy at times. So what you went backwards a lot of the time, but after quarter number one, a three nothing advantage for the home team, but the Hilltoppers threatening when we come back. Two minutes from the end of the first half when things went, and Dad's handmade Moroccan burgers bit the big one. So with less than an hour before the final whistle, Mom runs off to Long's to pull a new game plan together. A team's worth of burgers, buns, and brats. They were hot dogs. Mom, I'm telling a story. Anyways, with only 20 minutes left on the clock, she pulls together a full post-game meal, like a champ. Luckily, when the clock is ticking, our Long's has everything we need. Make Long's a part of your day. Friday, the Govs' quest to the top of the division takes a pit stop in the 94 block. Farrington, Waipahu, Hawaii football only on XCast, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum Sports. McDonald's local breakfast platters, just like you remember. Ba da ba ba ba. With hundreds of factory colors and free computerized paint matching, you can find the Benjamin Moore color you're looking for at City Mill. Need something? Try check City Mill. I think it's time your mom moved in. I officially love you all over again. Our banker Noah said we can use our home equity for a nice Ohana unit. Need a Noah in your life? Get your banker at ASBHawaii.com. Friday. It's the first contest of a two-match series between Hawaii and the Trojans of USC. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Welcome back here. We're at the lower campus of the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. Of course, Timmy Chang also representing Another TC here at the field for these home games for the Rainbow Warriors. 3-0 after quarter number one.
but a penalty ridden first quarter. In fact, it took 52 minutes to play out. You had five penalties on each side for Hawaii. Four of their five penalties were on offense. Yeah, and that's where they're struggling, right? The other two thirds playing pretty inspired fundamentally sound they have to get that offense going because you're not going to keep western kentucky out of the end zone off the scoreboard much longer this is a potent offense and they're figuring this things out as we go and so it is first and goal just inside the 10 here for austin reed and company it is a handoff that's given to davion irvin poindexter he's rolled up lesman to ala may perhaps get credited with the tackle. Not a lot of stats over the career of this guy, Blessman Ta'ala, but that does not indicate his value to this Hawaii defensive front. And there you see him able to move off of the blocker and make the play. Tremendous explosion, tremendous strength, 400 pound power clean, 450 pound bench press, plays with a low center of gravity. He is the best player on this football team, especially on this defense. He's tough to block inside saying immovable object he's one of those right yeah. and what rob said too it's availability he's been available every single week and that's a completion to daywood davis flag comes out though but davis spilling into the end zone and we'll see what this penalty will be about pass interference Offense, number four, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot for May second down. Offensive pass interference called against Michael Matheson. We're taking a look at the catch here, but this may not capture the Matheson penalty. That's a pick. So you basically had that block engaged before the throw, and you get to see this a little better on this wide look right there. You're seeing the rub route, as they call it on offensively, and defensively, they call it the pick route. Good job by the officials noticing that ha transpired before the play. So these two teams on offense, uh, they are appearing as though they're allergic to the red zone. They are backtracking, it seems, when they get these opportunities close to the goal line. Western Kentucky doing the same here, first and 10, or second and goal, I should say, now outside the 20 at the 22-yard line. Tyson Hilton said he gets more involved in offensive play calling in the red zone. Here's the throw to the deep corner, and it is incomplete. Sails long. Again, the intended target, Michael Matheson. We have another penalty flag. It looked like JoJo Forrest 8 had great coverage. I'm not, I didn't see any contact on the outside. These guys in the stripes. They're busy. They're earning their keep here this evening. Long discussion here. Look at Tyson Helton in his fourth year. 2019 Conference USA Coach of Pass the Year. Appearance. Defense, number eight. 15 yard penalty. Wow. An automatic. First down. So you had offensive pass interference and immediately following defensive pass interference against JoJo Forrest. <laughs> Forrest, the Oregon State transfer, has, a, according to Abraham Elamemian, the best cover corner, has dog in him, has that arrogant attitude in terms of playing out there on the island. They love this transfer from Oregon State. So right back inside the 10-yard line go the Hilltoppers. Coming off of a 38-point performance against Austin P. They won 38-27. Yet to score here, but they're looking to change that. The give is to Irvin Poindexter. He doesn't get much. Gets maybe to the four. Isaiah Tufongo, one of the guys wearing the black jerseys, making he'll, the stop. Yeah, Hilltop's trying to change the map. You got the guard, you got the tackle pulling, little trap play. Actually, the H-back, 89, comes up inside. Second and goal. Spotted just inside the five yard line. Fake handoff. Reed completes it to Dalvin Smith. And he crosses the goal line for the touchdown. Dalvin Smith 
who had no catches and just one target last week against Austin P. But he breaks the scoring ice for the Hilltoppers here in quarter number two. Yeah, and you're going to see, watch 17 do the pivot. You got the fake ball fake to the left. Really a nicely designed offensive play to get speed on the perimeter versus one of your linebackers. So the fourth year topper getting into the end zone and Braden Narvison on for the point after. He is 104 for 104 in PATs in his career. Perfect. And that one is once again perfect. So 7-3, Western Kentucky finally breaks the scoring ice. And they jump in front. Austin Reed to Dalvin Smith for six. Tack on the PAT, 7-3, Western Kentucky. Because Haumea loves to dance. Because Jaina dreams of a cancer-free future. Because Guy knows why preventive care matters. You are why we're reimagining healthcare. To give you more choices. To be there for you. To see you in new ways. Hawaii Pacific Health. We all have a song to sing and a story to tell. That's the beauty of life. With the right ride, you can go anywhere and do anything. Like the capable CRV, the perfect island ride. New Honda SUVs are on the way, so reserve yours today. See your Hawaii Honda dealer today and tell them Henry sent you. Metal Gold, pure, essential, full flavored goodness that fuels dreams and inspires us to push harder, reach higher, and dig deeper to find our greatness. Metal Gold, always made with Aloha. Great use of personnel. Bunch formation. You gotta see 17 go across almost the center, come all the way back in space, and use that speed to get to the outside. You see 47 linebacker Noah Kemi. You see a bunch of Rainbow Warriors, but that's how you use grass. That's how you use the whole field from a tight formation. Great play design, Tyson Hilton and that offensive staff. So 7-3 after the scoring drive for Western Kentucky. It would ultimately be 10 plays, 68 yards. Soaking up four minutes and one second off of the clock. Capped by that five-yard touchdown pass from Austin Reed to Dalvin Smith. Chucky Hines and Jalen Perdue back to receive this kick here following the touchdown. And it will be taken by Purdue, and he will kneel down in the end zone. Let's go down to Scott Robbs. He is with a VIP here in Manoa this evening. Scott. Yeah, no question a VIP. One of the all-time great Rainbow Warrior football players, Jesse Sopolu. Kind of full circle for you, Jesse. You're here watching your son coach the offensive line. What's that like? It feels weird, but at the same time, I'm proud. Uh, I just want them to understand that, you know, it's going to take a little time to build it, uh, build it one play at a time or one game at a time. Your thoughts about playing on campus and what you've seen from Hawaii? Man, this is awesome. I wish I, I played here when I was playing, you know, uh, get the student body here all involved. And it just has that passionate feeling to the stadium. I know we have a lot of 49er fans in Hawaii. How are the Niners going to be this year? Well, you know, we got Jimmy G back. So uh, that's a great thing. You can never have enough good football players. And I think, uh, you know, Trey Lance, uh, Jimmy's going to be good for him. And we got the rookie, uh, Brock Purdy, that's going to be, uh, Tim is going to be good for him also. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. Guys, back up to you. Thanks a lot, Scott. Always great to see Jesse Sapolu hanging around the field. Yeah, and just as we're talking to Jesse, the offensive line has a gaping hole, a great run, a first down, and uh, inspired play by that offensive line. Yeah, that was Najee Brian Lele on the carry. Braden Shager in at quarterback, by the way, on this drive for the Rainbow Warriors. And they keep it on the ground again. Will Ignat will make the play defensively. But there is a look at Braden Shager, 6'3", 215-pounder, still a frosh from Dallas, Texas. 
from Highland Park High School last week was 18 of 35 for 161 yards, was sacked once against Vanderbilt. He had his moments last season, certainly. Made three starts, had six appearances, was 2-1 and one as the starter. One of just 13 true frosh in the nation to start a game last year. And he was at the helm uh, against Fresno State when Hawaii pulled off a pretty remarkable upset victory on this field. Yeah, and, and I think uh, Braden Shager obviously has the most experience as a Rainbow Warrior quarterback. Also, a little tighter in the passing game in terms of his spiral, the velocity on it. He's a big, tall kid. He's got a little bit of mobility, and he made good decisions early last week, and I'm glad that they're going to the bench and the, the backup uh, is in the game because he could be the starter based upon his performance here in the second quarter. Joey Yellen goes four for 11 for 36 yards, had an interception. So he got his opportunity in that first quarter, but now it is Shager to see if he can try to get this offense going, but he throws it right into the hands of a defender. And this is gonna be taken back for a touchdown. Jawan Jones, 6'3", 275 pound red shirt senior, snatched it out of the air, and he takes it back for a big boy touchdown. 38 yards on the pick six. Coming off the left side, 34 with that skilled number, looks like a skilled athlete, and he's a big man moving quickly. Might be one of his first touchdowns of his lifetime, and uh, good job of reading the quarterback's eyes, understanding the screen, retracing your steps, and basically making the big play. A four-year starter, he is third in the FBS era of Western Kentucky football, which dates back to 2009, in career sacks. That time, though, he gets the pick six, the point after by Braden Narvison is good. And so Braden Shager is given the opportunity. And it winds up as a hilltopper snatch and score by the big fella, 14-3 Western Kentucky. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. With new cars arriving daily, now's the time to get in and get away. Now, get 2.99% APR for 48 months on some of our most popular models. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealer. If you're a parent, you visit the doctor a lot. But at Kaiser Permanente, they make things convenient. I can see my doctor, pick up prescriptions, and just get more done all at the same place. It's hard to take off from work, so being able to make appointments online based on our schedule is great. I also love not having to remember our entire medical history for each doctor we see. I'm a busy dad, but they make it so simple. That's what truly sets them apart. Thursday, the defending state champs are on a road to a repeat title, but a division rival awaits, hoping to derail those plans. Kamehameha, Punahou, ILH Girls Volleyball, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. At Spectrum News, we're striving to help inform your community, providing the latest news from journalists right here in Hawaii, the local sports you love, and now the local news and weather that matter most to you. Download the all-new Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers, your community connection. Well, the big fellow, Juwan Jones, with the pick six, 14-3 Western Kentucky. We have girls ILH volleyball coming your way on Spectrum OC 16 Thursday. Kamehameha, Kapalama, and Punahou. But my, how the tone has changed. Braden Shager comes out of the bullpen, so to speak. You see him talking with his head coach, Timmy Chang. And on his first drive, he gives the ball right to Western Kentucky. And Juwan Jones knows what to do with it. He goes back 38 yards for the pick six. Yeah, no stranger to big plays. Fourth all-time in tackle for losses. He's also has got has 17.5 sacks. That's seventh all-time. But I think that's his first time he's reached pay dirt. But he's got that 34 number. You know, as yeah, exactly. end, he's like, I want to be an athlete. <laughs> Line me up at corner, coach. <laughs> bobbled in the end zone. Jalen Perdue takes a knee, and so Hawaii's offense will come back out onto the field. And so here is the dilemma, Rich, right, is you have these two front-running quarterbacks in Braden Shager and Joey Yellen throughout camp. Timmy Chang said that their evaluation was so close, it was very hard to determine who should be the QB1. He goes with Shager last week, had its ups and downs for sure, 
gives Joey Yellen the chance in the second half, started off well, but there wasn't any kind of stranglehold put on the position. That didn't necessarily take place in the week of practice running up to this game either. And here you are now in the position where neither quarterback, the very early on here for Shager, obviously this is just his second possession, but neither quarterback really lightened the world on fire offensively here for Hawaii. Yeah, both have struggled, and they struggled last week. And, and that, to me, is the biggest question mark of this football season is the emergence of the quarterback. And you can see the replay, the quick slant underneath the center. That's the three-step game, but basically he's get, taking that ball and getting it out. Jonah Pinocchi lighting, lighting up at White House. Yeah, good to see Jonah Pinocchi out there. He was wearing a boot back on Tuesday at practice, and there was some concern as to whether or not he'd be available for this game, but he is out there. Again, Zion Bowen's not available, will likely miss multiple games because of injury. They're coming to practice both Tuesday and Wednesday, seeing those guys not practicing is a scary thought because this is already a very thin wide receiver group. The give is to Najee bryant Lele. Getting a heavy dose of Najee here in quarter number two. Lorenzo Hernandez and Derek Smith joining forces to bring him to the turf. Good job at the point of attack by Michael Vanderpool trying to get up to that second level. Aliki Tanavasa at center. Aliki Tanavasa, one of the four captains for this team. Most experienced position certainly on the field for Hawaii, that offensive line. Here's Shager rolling to his right. He's going to throw deep. It's caught by Pinoke. Great hands exhibited by number one. 6'2", junior out of St. Louis. A career-high seven catches for 101 yards. 49 yards after the catch on nine targets versus Vandy last week. Nice job coming back across his body. Really great placement, tight spiral. Really nice catch by number one, the big receiver from St. Louis. Gain of 27, quick throw that time by Shager. This time he connects with another local product, Tamatoa Mokiao Atimalala, 5'10", junior out of Campbell High School. Tamatoa did not get much run last week, but we saw what he did in the spring game. We know what he's capable of. He's a big play type of guy. Make a really nice slot receiver in that 11 personnel group. Timeout. Western Kentucky. So Western Kentucky. That's the first charge of the half. Media. Western Kentucky signals for a timeout, and so we'll keep it here, but you have the 22-yard connection followed by that connection to Mokiao Atimalala, his first catch of the season, by the way. And so all of a sudden, Braden Shager, uh, after the rude awakening that was his first possession of this quarter and throwing the pick six, all of a sudden, he's got a little thing going on this drive. Yeah, talk about resiliency, talk about adversity. I mean, he comes in, throws a pick on his first play for a touchdown. He comes back out, and you know what? He's throwing dimes. He's making good decisions. He's looking like the quarterback that Timmy Chang thought he was early in training camp. And he's got to continue to step up and play consistent football. Good look here, by the way, at the new design of the helmets here this season. The uh, top-up pattern striped down the middle of the helmet, uh, replaced by the feather pattern that is supposed to represent the warrior and chief ties of the native Hawaiian culture. And I, what I was happy about was the initial change to the design of the helmet actually shrunk the size of the Hawaiian Islands decal because they were going to make room uh, for the performance stickers. And what they did was they decided to revert back to the original size of the Hawaiian Island decal. And that makes this particular announcer very happy because that was one of my favorite parts of the helmet. Well, you're from Maui, and Maui being the <laughs> second largest island of the change, you were happy about to, to be able to see that, see all eight Hawaiian islands. But you know what I'm happy about, too, is it's got the brotherhood on the back. It may be a little busy with all the other stuff going on, but the island chain, to me, with the H... I, I love that helmet. It's a key. It's a key. But that is part of the effort of Timmy Chang, right? Trying to, in essence, sort of rebrand this program uh, to announce via the clarion to the rest of the country and beyond, right, into parts of Polynesia. Hey, look, this is Polynesia's team as well as Hawaii's team. Yeah, there's no question about that. And, and Timmy's been very successful this offseason in terms of kissing babies, shaking hands, <laughs> raising money. The players have had better nutrition. You see some facility improvements. And you see that everywhere you go. Timmy Chang has brought a lot of excitement back to this program. 
Obviously, it is a long way between doing that and ingratiating yourself to the community around this program and putting together wins on the field. That, that is a different kind of thing altogether. He is still working on that second part, but I think that foundation that he had to kind of help repair coming off of what happened in the previous regime, uh, that has gone well for sure. And so what he gets back onto the field on a first and 10, it is a handoff. Diedrich Carson back out there and never actually goes down. Jaden Hunter, one of the first guys to him. But that is vintage Diedrich. Uh, well after the whistle, uh, he's still always trying to charge for extra yards. And it's good to see Diedrich getting carries. Last week, obviously, the two fumbles that resulted in 14 points. He had a little problem with ball security early last year, and then he came on, and he was very good at securing the football. He's got to get his confidence, his mojo back. Ian Shoemaker, offensive coordinator for Hawaii, says, hey, look, we talked to Diedrich this week. He knew what happened last week. We told him, you're still going to be our guy. You're going to be our bell cow in many ways. And here he is again on the give, trying to twist and turn and grind for extra yardage, and successfully does so. They're going to spot this at about the 16-yard line. Looked like he was dead to rights, closer to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and Keiki Misapeka, the running back coach, is going to like the second effort, like the low center of gravity, like the that. ability to use the offhand and continue to spin for extra yardage. That is some of that Philadelphia toughness right there exhibited by Diedrich Parsons. Started his college career as a walk-on. There were coaches and recruiting uh, scouts that told him he was just too small, just too small to be a scholarship athlete. He was trying to change that perception for sure, continuing to do so. And look at the way he just continues to drive. This time it was Najee bryant Lelay on the carry, who has some of the same characteristics. Yeah, you can see Jordan Murray at the point of attack. You're going to see Il Manning. You're going to see Aliki Tanavasa. And I guarantee you, Jesse Sapolo is smiling right now because Roman Sapolo, his son, had an opportunity to go with the San Francisco 49ers, his team but he stayed loyal to Timmy Chang and the University of Hawaii, and it's paying off in dividends in this drive. How about Hawaii just trying to run it right at the Hilltoppers here on this drive? It is Cameron Cooper now in at quarterback for the first time this season. They run an option play. It's tossed back to Parson, and he breaks through for a Hawaii touchdown. Nine yards, Diedrich Parson to the house off of the toss from Cameron Cooper. Quarterback option, that does a nice job of sucking up the end defender and then pitching it out to Diedrich Parson. You know Cooper has that athleticism. We saw what he did laterally in terms of his pro agility shuttle, his speed. He's known for that athleticism. Package him in the red zone. Package him in crucial situations. Good use of him by Ian Shoemaker. Great call. And so Matt Shipley on for the point after. We got two good kickers in this ball game. Shipley... 69 for 69 in PATs in his career, and he tacks that one on. Hawaii gets into pay dirt. Cameron Cooper, the Diedrich Parson. We got a ball game. Want a real taste of New York? The Big New Yorker is back with a big, bold taste rolled into 16 inches of foldable crust. It's handmade to perfection with a sweet marinara sauce and your favorite topping. And at 30% larger than our large, the Big New Yorker is only $9.99 for carryout. Bring together your family and friends for a Big New Yorker party. Each pizza is just $9.99 for carryout. The Big New Yorker, so close you can taste it. Only at Hawaii Pizza Hut. I love how in Hawaii we are all connected. That's Layla. She just bought this house. Hey, welcome. And that's her first Hawaiian loan officer, Gloria. Oh, you know I hooked my girl up. Of course, they're friends now. Ron crushed it at Gloria's wedding. Oh. oh. Hey, thanks, Marcus. So I booked in a play tonight. Yeah, you. First Hawaiian Bank keeps you connected to your finances and a whole lot more. Because Haumea loves to dance. Because Jaina dreams of a cancer-free future. Because Guy knows why preventive care matters. You are why we're reimagining healthcare. To give you more choices. To be there for you. To see you in new ways. Hawaii Pacific Health. 
Welcome back. Moments ago, the ensuing kickoff following that Hawaii touchdown, Kyler Halverson, who had 72 kickoffs last year for a 64-yard average, ninth in FBS. And look at this Hawaii defense. It seems as though a flame has been lit here. Braden Shager following the pick six, put together a couple of great throws on that last drive for Hawaii. And then they decided to just run the ball right at the Hilltoppers. They did so successfully. Then they bring in Cam and Cooper off the bench to run the option play. The defense also now responding. Yeah, bless me to Allah. When you talk about strongest players in Hawaii history, Ma'a Tanavasa, Isaac Sapawanga. Bless me to Allah, because of his leverage and his strength, he's using his hands better. He has good get off, and he plays with good pad level. Clogs that middle up every time. They run the reverse to Michael Matheson. And he'll get positive yards, but he pays the toll as he took a good lick at the end of that play. Jojo Forrest was in the area. Jonah Kahavai Welch as well. Yeah, and that was most of the run problems last week was on the perimeter. Who has force? Who has contained? Who's supposed to fill? You know, they were tackling fundamentals as well, but Hawaii, again, playing with enthusiasm, with adrenaline, had a great week of practice, tackling better, better angles, coming to balance. It's nice to see fundamental footballs because that's what the Rainbow Warrior fans expect. And giving the fans a reason to make some noise as well here on third and four. Back to throw is Reed. Fires to the far sideline. It's caught by Matheson. And that's enough to move the sticks. Yeah, and it wasn't because of Jacob Euro was afraid to dial it up because they dialed it up. Put those corners on the island. And if you're going to give up something, you got to give up the out. Stay inside. Keep your leverage at that cornerback position. And I'm so glad that Abraham Elamimium coaching corners again because he's as good as there is. That last Hawaii drive, by the way, nine plays, 75 yards for the score. Three minutes and 56 seconds. And now the Hilltoppers trying to forge a response of their own. Under six minutes to play in half number one. Reed. With the short throw, surviving that initial blow was the pass catcher, Jakari Moses. Yeah, Ty, Ty Marsh coming out of coverage, getting off the stock block. The first initial hit allowing guys to get east and west, and then there's Panay Pavihi. Good leverage, good job of constricting the ball carrier. So that'll be a loss of about a yard on the play. Second and 11 here for the toppers. Another part of that last drive, we mentioned just how long it lasted. That was another objective for Timmy Chang. They wanted to try to sustain drives and keep this quick hit offense, at least as it's reputed to be, off the field as much as possible. That's going to bring up third down Moses on the carry. And there's Ty Marsh again. Ty Marsh. And then in the last play, there was Anthony Sagapolutelli, who was a walk-on transfer from UNLV. But you're right, Ty Marsh. Last week, Corners got a little nosy. Outside backers got a little nosy. Safeties were inside. They have to keep that outside shoulder free. Nice job of playing that contained position. Cue the crowd. Third and eight. Reed looking to the sideline for instruction. Still 12 seconds on the play clock. Beautiful to see fans here at Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. Trying to make an impact. Reed with time. He's going to break out and run. He's going to get first down yardage slides across midfield. And that quiets the crowd here on hand, at least momentarily. But you're right. It's nice to see fans cheering into the second quarter. Defense playing well. Special teams. Offense starting to move the ball. And you're going to see right now, great coverage downfield. What we call that, if it's a sack, is a coverage sack. But great job of plastering the receivers downfield. The safety's overlapping. It seems as though this game has found a certain rhythm and flow, too. I mean, you're talking about a game with 12 penalties, six on each side, and it just, as I say that, of course, whistles are blown, but it just seemed as though it was herky-jerky. Roy, first down is under further review. They're going to review whether or not Austin Reed got past the first down marker. Where he slides is not necessarily where the ball, it's where he attempts to slide, where he gives himself up. Where that butt drops. Okay, so George Gusman is in the booth with us. He is our Spectrum Sports Rules Analyst. That is another tweak to one of the rules, right, George, is on the slide. Can you explain? Actually, what we're looking for here is when he drops his butt, where is the ball? <laughs> That's the key to the uh, 
to the ruling. It's, it's not an easy call um, just because everything's gone in full speed. But what we need to see is a view with him. When he drops his butt, where is the position of the ball? And in this case, in relation to a first down. Yeah, and so that's something to further protect the offensive players if they give themselves up. So basically what they're limiting is the ability to fake a slide as Kenny. has been executed in the past. Once you're beginning to slide, you are giving up. That's called the Kenny Pickett rule. He, gave, he faked the slide, kept going. You've got to, the intention to go down, you give yourself up. What we need here is a view, a line view, um, to see where the ball is when he drops his butt. And then the problem with these type of things, too, is then you got to figure out where the clock is, and you want to, and it could be fourth and one. Very crucial situation. After further review, replay determined the, re the quarterback began to slide prior to reaching the line of game. The ball we placed at the 47-yard line to be fourth and one. That's a great example of that tweak in that particular rule, right, Rich? Yes, uh, exactly. And we're lucky to have George Guzman up here explaining the intricacies, the nuances of the new rule. Because he's way past the line, but sure. it's not where you slide to. It's not when you get touched. It's when the intent to go down happens. Yeah. And so I think in any other year, that would have been granted a first down. Instead... They're going to say it's just short, and they're going to say it's fourth and one. So this is a pretty weighty play here at this stage of the game. Especially with this field position. They're not over the 50. They're not in four-down territory. This is why Tyson Helton makes the big bucks. Reed out of the shotgun. And whistles. Just as I was talking about the flow of the game, we have a timeout. Hawaii will take their first charge time of the half. 30 seconds. And there was something that Hawaii was seeing there pre-snap that prompted them to call a timeout. 3.35 left in the first half. This is sort of the game within the game, right? The chess match between the two sidelines. You're right, and it, maybe it's somebody up in the box saying that Hawaii's outflanked. They're not in the proper coverage, the proper front. They get that word down to Timmy Chang. He has to go to the official and get that timeout called. Really a nice job in terms of procedure, protocol by the Hawaii defensive football staff. Yeah, and interesting, right? We talked to both offensive coordinators or play callers for either side. And you have, uh, in the case of Hawaii, Ian Shoemaker, who calls the plays from up in the booth, communicates with Timmy Chang down on the field to communicate with the players in turn. And you have the co-offensive coordinator, play caller for Western Kentucky, Ben Arbuckle, who prefers to be down on the field for said communication purposes. Yeah, and Jacob, your the defensive coordinator is down on the field along with uh, Abraham Elamimim is up in the booth, and there has to be that constant communication. So here we go again. Fourth and one. Ball at the Hilltoppers 47. And it's going to be a keeper, and it's going to be first down yardage, no doubt about it that time. Austin Reed. Little quarterback power, right? You, you add the guard. You got the full back, the remaining back leading up inside. And this is an element of Austin Reed's game that I think has gotten a, a bit of a surprised reaction, right? I mean, he has run for key yardage in some pretty high leverage situations in this game. Yeah, he's more athletic than I gave him credit for initially. And I've watched all of their tape last week, but... How about this play? Ends up being a flea flicker. Reed down the sideline. It's caught. And this is going to be a big gainer for Western Kentucky. In fact, it's going to be a touchdown! Forty-seven yards, not good tackling, trickeration at its finest, the flea flicker. Josh Simon, the tight end. This guy comes in decorated. Did not do much last week. But here he is off of the flea flicker. That thing was fancy. It was designed in a laboratory somewhere, and they executed it to perfection. Josh Simon, who had zero catches, one target versus Austin P. But this is a guy who was a former freshman All-American back in 2020 by the Athletic. And he was on the receiving end of that highlight play. 33, Peter Manuma trying to punch the ball out as he secures the tackle. you got to take that young man to the ground. Second man in will go for the strip. Peter Manuma 
went from 166 pounds to 190 pounds, did a nice job this offseason getting bigger, stronger, but you got to take the young man to the mat. The ruling of the first pass was thrown backwards, or excuse me, was not a legal forward pass, and there further review. Oh, well, they're going to have another review here. And so there was a lot of the sleight of hand here on this play, and they're going to see if one of those exchanges was an illegal forward pass. Right. You can't have two forward passes. The ball has to go backwards. I didn't see anything like that that was well executed. On that first one, perhaps, Austin Reed off the snap, and it was almost like a shovel pass type of action. Uh, no. Seemed to be a straight handoff, huh? That first first toss um, is very close to being forward, and I think that's what replay is looking at. It's, the second toss is clearly backwards. I think what we're looking here is number eight, where he releases the ball and what is first touched, whether that's forward or backward. You're only allowed one forward pass in a down. Yeah, that didn't look to be a forward pass, at least on the angles that we've been given. And I believe we're going to get a confirmation here. Well designed, good flea flicker. After further review, the first pass was legal. Excuse me, was not a forward pass. Therefore, the touchdown stands. They're really not traditional flea flicker when I say that because sure. the running back now is actually the one who is lateraling to the wide receiver who's giving it back to the quarterback. And it looked like it was executed. That was, it was close. That was some serious razzle-dazzle, though. Yeah, it was. That They're going deep into the playbook. So Braden Narvison on for the point after. You know, the thing about Tyson Helton is June Jones was not into trickeration. Now, he has also other mentors, you know, Coach Brom. you got some air raid stuff coming, and uh, he's got a huge playbook offensively. Oh, my gosh, and that one has to take the assist off of the left upright to go through. That is Braden Narvison, who has never missed a PAT in his career. Here's another look at the touchdown. Drawn up and executed with perfection. And how about the run after the catch by Josh Simon? Just would not be denied. Yak, strength, fortitude, get into the end zone. You talked about Tyson Helton likes his receivers tall. He's got big tight ends. He's 17 guys over six foot four. This length, this speed. This is a real football program. Simon, they were expecting some huge things out of him last season. A two-time All-Conference USA honorable mention last year. At three catches, 73 yards, two touchdowns in the season opener before suffering a season-ending injury. And so he is back, and he comes back here on this trip to the islands with a fury. Mackey Award watch list, so you know there's talent. There's also production, and you mentioned that injury last year. He's a big-time tight end. Good-looking young man. And so Munson with the ensuing kick. And this may be returnable here. Jalen Perdue going to take it across the 20 and finally gets rolled up at about the 23 yard line 246 on the clock here in quarter number two that play took a little bit of the air out of clarence tc ching athletic complex chuki hines leading the way up there jalen purdue trying to find a scene trying to find some daylight and tyson helton knows a lot about special teams coverage returns he was part of that staff he was the special teams coordinator when chad owen set the ncaa record with 343 return yards against byu leading the nation in kickoff returns in 2003 so he said i'm part of all special teams and i also help play call in the red zone he, and make all head coaching decisions. Wasn't there a plaque to commemorate the incredible year in 2001 on special teams leading the country? Hawaii will take the second charge time of the half, 30 Th seconds. This gives us a chance to talk about this as a timeout is taken. We'll keep things here. But there, there's a story behind this, right? Yeah, so I coached the front line, the front five guys. Wes Swan coaches the up backs. George Lumpkin coached the return guys. Tyson Helton was the overall special teams coach. He left that year. I think he got paid. Partly because he <laughs> led the nation in kickoff returns. 
and we couldn't find the plaque. The plaque <laughs> is still missing, and he swears he is not in possession. Chad Owens and I are challenging him 20 years later to get the plaque back to Hawaii. He denied it. He thought it was good fun. Yeah, he, he laughed it off, but uh, when you were asking him about it, there, there was definitely at least a tinge of seriousness. Some anxiety there? There, there was something. No, he, Maybe I did take that plaque? It was great to see you guys interact when we were talking with him earlier in the week. He had nothing but great things to say about you. Uh, certainly, he enjoyed his time here for four years. He had just gotten married, said it was almost like a four-year honeymoon being out in the islands. And obviously, he says he learned a lot from the coaches that he was surrounded by. This is Dior Scott. And that end around, and he's going to be tackled for a loss. Colossi was the first one there for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, a little jet sweep, really well defended on the perimeter. Usually what's happening is the nickel back, the corners are fighting off the stock blocks. They're keeping their head up, their eyes up. They're attacking the football really well defended. So another negative play here for Hawaii. And those are the three pillars right negative plays penalties turnovers timmy chang said there was too many of all of those last week he said you can't even start getting into the other measurements if you are already sort of at a loss when it comes to those three primary categories and we have seen hawaii hurt by it again here this evening it's hard to play football behind the change it's hard to play enough when you're getting positive yardage in terms of offensive production okay nice job good moves but again, great pursuit, good angles, getting people to the football. But you're exactly right. Offensively, they didn't possess the ball. Defensively, they didn't take it away. They had problems tackling. They're performing much better, but they're going to have to continue to get some offensive production. Hawaii well, two for seven on third down. Facing another one here. Shager in trouble. Plants the feet, the feet and throws an interception. Upton Stout with the pick. He had an INT TD last week. Got another interception right there. Really poor decision by Shager because he was under duress. You need to take the sack, throw it out of bounds. You're going to see right here, great pressure off the edge. Nice job of staying alive, but right here, live to play another down. Even if you have to punt the football, do not throw it into coverage off your back foot. Poor decision by the young sophomore quarterback. So three interceptions between Braden Shager and Joey Yellen. We saw Cameron Cooper out there run an option play. But other than that, it has been just Shager and Yellen attempting passes so far from behind center. Yeah, and, and look at this field position here for Western Kentucky. Yeah, Hawaii's offense is responsible for giving up 21 points. 14 last week, seven. But the field position right now is advantageous. The throw is Reed, steps up in the pocket. He's brought down as he lets it fly. And that falls harmlessly to the field, incomplete. Westman Ta'ala and Andrew Choi applying some of the pressure there. Remember last week, the halftime score was 21-10 against Vanderbilt. Of course, then they went on for a 35 to nothing third quarter en route to a 63 to 10 victory, but a buck 24 left to play here in this first half at the moment. Andrew Choi, the walk-on from Kaiser High School, the brother of Zeno Choi has got bigger, faster, stronger, and I give Cody Cook a lot of that credit. He used to be trained by the great Chad E.K., but since he's been here at the University of Hawaii, he's gained 20 pounds of muscle. He's become more explosive. Andrew Choi is a productive player for this Warrior defense. Western Kentucky will take their second charge time of the half. 30 seconds. All right, so Western Kentucky signals for a timeout. Each team with a timeout remaining will keep things here. A buck 24, as mentioned, left to play here in this first half. And this is one of those scenarios, 21-10, if Hawaii takes this into the halftime with some of the turnovers, with the penalties, you're feeling kind of okay about yourself, right? If Western Kentucky ends up scoring here, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a different vibe. And, and then it's that whole thing about taking it away on defense, which they haven't done. But more importantly, they're giving the ball away offensively. And that has to stop for this team to be successful. Well, you wanted to see some improvement here this week because obviously next week, a major challenge. You go to Ann Arbor, the big house, against number eight, Michigan. You see the upcoming schedule after that. Hawaii back home against Duquesne a couple of road games. We will be bringing you a lot of that action here on Spectrum Sports. This 
is a bit of a shovel-like pass that goes to Malachi Corley. This guy is blazing fast. Yeah, and that was man coverage, and you saw the Hawaii defender trying to get through that formation to tackle the man with the ball, which was his man initially, and then you saw a great block on the perimeter. And Verdell Edwards and Matangi Thompson both chasing that one down. Third down coming up. Verdell Edwards, one of the best-looking boundary corners we've seen in a long time. He looks like an SEC player, and he plays that boundary corner. He's good against the run, getting better against the pass. Got that size, 6'2", 210, transfer from Iowa State. Big play here, third and three, play clock down to two. And stumbling out of the backfield was the running back, Jakari Moses. And so that's going to bring up fourth down. Quarterback, running back exchange. I'm not sure they ever got into the pocket. Good job by Noah Kemba, 47, coming off the edge. So, field goal attempt coming up here for Braden Narvison. Excuse me, Noah Kamana coming off the edge, and we all know who his dad is, Tim Kamana, and John Kamana, the uncle. So, the preseason Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Year, Braden Narvison, to attempt a 26-yarder here. And this one clangs off of the left upright, and it is no good. He nipped the post on that PAT on the last Western Kentucky touchdown. That time, he nails the goal post, and it is no good. The score frozen 21-10. Yeah, and there's no tougher kick than as you get closer, being on that left hash. College football hashes being wider. It becomes more of an angle kick. And we talked about how prolific he was with his 141 points. He's perfect on extra points. That one clanged off the left upright. He was 23 of 29 last season with a long of 53. And to be honest, there's not a lot of wind to speak of at the moment here in Manoa. But if you know anything about mechanics, he's talking about his plant leg slipped. I mean, he was motioning towards that, but there's no excuses when you get that close. That's a win for Hawaii's defense and special teams. And so Hawaii with 27 seconds to see if they can try to do something here, or are they just going to take this score into the locker room? Uh, that is exactly what they're going to do. Braden Shager takes a knee and Western Kentucky will allow the rest of the time to tick off the clock as well so for the second straight week Hawaii will take a 21 to 10 deficit into the locker room against a team that is favored yeah and let's hope the coaches make better adjustments let's make sure the coaches play more fundamentals we've got to score offensively take the ball away defensively that is the end well, of the first half, first half that seemed to have no rhythm because of all the penalties and then it started to find a flow when the dust clears 21 10 toppers on top at the break the x-rays from your urgent care visit look good just stay off that leg okay what about my rec team i'm all they got next season thanks doc wow you already scheduled my pt i love doctors who work with athletes does he know you tripped over a basketball? That's a sports injury. At Kaiser Permanente, we make getting care easy so you can get back on the court quicker. You're watching Spectrum Sports, the home of University of Hawaii Sports. If you enjoy having a 40-hour work week, give a union a shaka. If you value safer working conditions, family medical coverage, and paid sick leave, give a union a shaka. If you appreciate retirement benefits and better pay, let's see that shaka. Because it took 80 years of middle-class workers standing together to earn the many job benefits we all enjoy today. What can your union do for you? Why don't you ask them? A message brought to you by HGEA.
All that melty cheese you crave with double the steak is back at Taco Bell. The double steak grilled cheese burrito. Aloha and welcome back to the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex in Ma Noa, where the University of Hawaii football team through two quarters trail Western Kentucky 21-10 at halftime. How's it going, everybody? Aloha, I'm Rob DeMello. Joining me, Jordan Helley and Kavika Hallams. And guys, we entered this ball game talking about the importance for this University of Hawaii football team to be able to establish themselves and find a quarterback here moving forward for the Rainbow Warriors. Joey Yellen got the start. He goes 4 of 11, not able to create any momentum from an offensive standpoint. Negative three yards total through their first three possessions. He is then replaced by Braden Shager, who is able to manufacture the first touchdown, but Cameron Cooper, the quarterback, who ends up pitching the ball into the end zone. All three quarterbacks, Cooper, Yellen, Shager, perform here in the first quarter. Not necessarily a good thing, right, Jordan? Yeah, when you hit quarterback bingo, it's not always, you know, you win the prize. It, and I thought it was a good decision to make the move to Shaker to start the second quarter. Yellen out there, that was probably his best throw, the, the, the throw down the seam on third down over to Caleb Phillips, the tight end. And, and that's the other factor I'm sure we'll talk about here in the half, the lack of production from the other tight end in Jordan Murray. But I, I just thought that Shager, the, the offense has moved better when he's been out there. And and for Yellen, you know, it's just, it, it, there's too much indecision out there. There's too much um, a, a lack of confidence, I think, in what he wants to see out there and what he is seeing. And so I think the move to Shager made sense, led them obviously to the 10 points, and they're at least in this ballgame at halftime. Now, truth be told, Braden Shager does throw two interceptions in his time at quarterback here in the second quarter. But he does go four of six for 47 yards, and as mentioned, manufactured the only touchdown of this game for the Rainbow Warriors. Yeah, and, and the thing, you know, like Jordan's talking about, it's tough when you're already down to your third quarterback in the first half. But when you are able to find a quarterback that knows the system, yes, he's only a sophomore, but Shaver has actually been a guy that you can count on. He's accurate with the football. Unfortunately, he's through bad passes, that screen, of course, giving away freebies as we did last week, Hawaii did last week. That's not a good sign, of course, moving forward. But I like that the fact that Coach Timmy Chang is still going to look for that guy to be the guy. Six penalties for 50 yards by the University of Hawaii football team in a half that was pretty ugly on both sides of the ball as far as the referees go, having to correct a lot of the uh, football <laughs> playing of Western Kentucky yeah. and the University of Hawaii. Only able to put up over uh, about 130-something yards of offense here, but could you identify, Jordan, the difference between maybe the first three, four possessions of this ball game and the final couple? Yeah, you know, it was clear that they wanted to establish the run early on. We saw a lot of that. The, the only problem was there wasn't a whole lot doing on the ground. And a little surprising. I thought the offensive line didn't play as well as they did last week in that first quarter. They couldn't get a run game going. And they could, you know, some uncharacteristic mistakes as well from the offensive line getting beat on pass rush, some penalties. And, and they tried to get DJ Carson going. It's interesting when they started rotating him and Najee Bryant Lele in the second quarter, maybe keeping Carson a little more fresh. Both guys were pretty effective of course leading to the touchdown pitch here Cooper's one uh, one debut in this game was was basically that speed option and so you know they, they were they were trying to move it around a little bit they started going to a little bit more of the quick game when Shager got in there they got to do more of that to try and get this offense some first down so they can find some consistent rhythm six different pass catchers for the University of Hawaii football team able to bring in receptions in that first half, Jonah Pinoke, the leading receiver, two catches for 32 yards on his only two targets of the game. But we talk about six different guys caught the ball. One guy who did not catch the ball is Jordan Murray, who Jordan Helley talked about a little bit earlier. That's a guy that, if anything, heading into this season, a lot of people anticipated that maybe we'd all be talking about them going to Jordan Murray too much, much like the conversation was a couple of years here with Calvin Turner Jr. of, hey, you need to give this guy some breathing room and at some point. Jordan Murray, zero targets here in the first half. How surprising is that being that 
he walks off the bus as the guy that is probably the most feared here <laughs> on the offense. You know, and no question about it. And I thought against Vanderbilt, he was a guy that actually looked to be the one that could possibly be a SEC type player. The way you look at his physicality, the way he looks coming off that bus, as you talk about, Rob, and for him not to even be looked at at all in this first half surprises me because he had opportunities against Vanderbilt. And we, I thought moving forward, he was going to be a guy that's going to be a matchup nightmare for the Hilltoppers on their defensive ends. So it's, it's, a, it's a surprise to me that he isn't being targeted, but I think he's going to get, I think he's going to change. Well, the University of Hawaii football team through two quarters, trail Western Kentucky 21 to 10. A lot more to talk about and take a look at some numbers here as the Rainbow Warriors trail by 11 at halftime on Spectrum Sports. My dad's my rock. He was a single father, so it's just me and my sister. I got a call from my sister and dad was in a really bad car accident. They medevaced him. They weren't sure if he was gonna make it through the night. Three months in the hospital, I knew that I needed someone that would help me be my father's advocate and a family friend had referred John Yamani. I was telling him all my worries, what do I do? And he said, concentrate on your dad getting better. And when he told me, I was like, okay, this is what we needed for our family. Sunday, Hawaii closes out the Outrigger Volleyball Challenge with a match against Pac-12 Powerhouse UCLA. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum Sports. Calling all fans. Football Fanatics not only has the official licensed gear, but we're opening our biggest and baddest store in Kapolei. We're talking big spirit, strong rivalry, and more of the game we all love. Football Fanatics, real gear for real fans. Dance party. Let's go. When inspiration strikes, say yes with the new Priority Unlimited credit card from First Hawaiian Bank. Wherever you shop, whatever you're shopping for, you can earn 2% cash back on everything you buy. From small stuff to big stuff to stuff you want. A card that rewards you for every purchase and helps you stay connected to everything that matters. If football is your game, Island Sportswear has got you covered. Island Sportswear in the Windward Mall is your one-stop shop for all official teams. We don't just have the gear, we walk the walk and live the game. When you need real gear for real fans, then spike your next goal at Island Sportswear. With OC16.TV, you never have to worry about choosing which game to watch at home or missing a game if you're on the go. Look for the Now Playing section on the homepage, find the channel you'd like to watch, sign in with your Spectrum username and password, and enjoy! Welcome back to Ma Noa, where the University of Hawaii football team trails Western Kentucky 21 to 10 at halftime. Let's take a look at the numbers here from the first half delivered to you by Pizza Hut as the Rainbow Warriors and the Hilltoppers were able to get two quarters here. Kavika, when you look at these numbers, what really jumps out to you as far as telling the story in the first half? Obviously, the turnovers. Three turnovers and also being able to score off of that pick six. But when I look at it, I'm also looking at 83 passing yards for the University of Hawaii football team against the Western Kentucky defense that gave up 27 points against Austin P last week, an FCS team. And they are susceptible against the pass, but for not being able to run or throw the football at the way that Hawaii is used to seeing these guys play, that passing amount of yardage in the first half is stunning to me, regardless of who you're going to have at the quarterback position. I need, guarantee they need to get better. Well, when you look at this University of Hawaii football team heading in against Western Kentucky, the biggest discrepancy was probably the thought process of UH trying to figure out what it is that they're doing on offense and defense. Western Kentucky having the continuity of understanding exactly what they're doing, right? Yeah, and look, they pressured both Yellen and Shager, especially Yellen in that first quarter. And then Shaker's two incompletions, unfortunately, two interceptions, including that one there on the box screenplay. Uh, but this Western Kentucky squad, right, they, they, they really, I think, kind of playing into it, 
we were able to stop the run, as Kavika pointed out, just the 83 passing yards, but also only 39 rushing yards. And they, if that's one way they can get the pass game going. If they can start establishing that run, get a little more play action involved, take a little pressure off of whoever it is that comes out to start the third quarter at quarterback, that could really, really help. Well, if, you, if the talk for this University of Hawaii football team was lack of consistency, Western Kentucky providing that here in the first half, leading 21 to 10. A lot more to talk about before we get out here to the third quarter. You're watching Spectrum Sports. The effects of climate change are all around us. Not wasting energy makes a big difference. We got LED bulbs that are twice as efficient as CFLs. We bought Energy Star appliances that use less energy. If we all use energy more efficiently, it will add up. Together, we can make a bigger impact. The power to change is in our hands. For Energy Star rebates from Hawaii Energy, go to hawaiianelectric.com slash power to change. Looking for the perfect venue to build team unity or award the MVP trophy? Bayview Mini Put and Zipline is a great way to switch things up for your next team function or banquet. With two sprawling courses totaling 36 greens, we'll give your team a whole new competitive edge. Run our entire course for that unique team bonding experience. We have full catering options or we allow you to bring your own food. And for the adventurous team players, soar over the park on Bayview's thrilling Zipline. It's building team fun for everyone at Bayview Mini Put and Zipline in Kaneohe home. It's where you live, you're happy. At Bank of Hawaii, we want to help you live it even more. So to help you do more with today's record high home values, we've increased the amount you can access of your hard-earned equity to up to $400,000 without an appraisal. You can even lock in a low fixed rate for the first five years. Apply with Simplify by Bank of Hawaii. It's the fast, easy way to get more cash, more peace of mind, and just plain more happy. That melty cheese you crave with double the steak is back at Taco Bell. The double steak grilled cheese burrito. Welcome back to Ma Noor, the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex where the University of Hawaii football team trails Western Kentucky 21 to 10 at halftime. We're just a few minutes away from getting the third quarter started. And so Kavika, what do you look ahead to here in this second half of the University of Hawaii football team? Remember at this time last week, when you're at halftime, the Rainbow Warriors came out of that locker room and they gave up 35 unanswered in that third quarter to Vanderbilt. How can they avoid that this time around? I think tightening it up on defense. Um, let's not forget that they actually were able to, um, where Western Kentucky came in averaging for over 422 yards a game in total offense. Last year, they were second in the nation. So the defense is doing a pretty good job of slowing that offense down. I think tightening up on defense, but again, getting others involved, particularly you talked about Jordan Murray. Let's get offense, get these guys involved, have a quarterback that's playing with that type of confidence to lead them to the second half comeback here. Jordan Helley, how does the University of Hawaii football defense kind of get into the rhythm of Austin Reed, who has been able to pretty much do what it is that he does here, whether it was at the Division II level last year or with Western Kentucky here to this point of the season? Yeah, so far for this defense, right, a, a little bit better. Really gave up the 14 points. You consider one uh, one of the touchdowns a pick six in this ball game. They got to get pressure. They got to find a way to get pressure, whether it's somebody kind of elevating on that front line or, or Coach Jacob Yoro, the, the defensive coordinator, they're going to have to start mixing some things. You saw that a little bit in the second quarter where they were dialing up some pressure. They're going to need to maybe get creative. They're going to probably have to take a few more chances, try to force some turnovers as well. Just three tackles for loss in that first half after none a week ago. Well, it's a two-possession game here in Monoa as the University of Hawaii trails Western Kentucky 21-10. to We're going to take a break. When we come back, it's the second half. Rainbow Warriors and the Hilltoppers. When we come back, third quarter gets underway. In a world where people need saving. Somebody needs saving. One hero could save you more. Don't worry, citizen. I'm here to save. Already saved. The Day. Switched into Farmers Hawaii so he could save an average of $453 on his auto insurance. If you need saving, get a quote from Farmers Hawaii. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. 
Call 808 Farmers or visit FarmersHawaii.com for a quote today. That's 808 Farmers. Friday, the Govs quest to the top of the division takes a pit stop in the 94 block. Farrington, Waipahu, OA football only on XCast, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum Sports. I stepped into the crosswalk and across the street I saw a bus coming. He kept coming at me and never stopped. They tried to say that Kenny ran in front of the bus. Then they hid the, hid the video from the bus for almost two years. But eventually we got the video and it showed the bus driver just ran him over. And it was all a, a bunch of lies. You just have to keep pushing and pushing and eventually you can get to the truth. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. With new cars arriving daily, now's the time to get in and get away. Now, get 2.99% APR for 48 months on some of our most popular models. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealer. Friday. It's the first contest of a two-match series between Hawaii and the Trojans of USC. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC16. Exclusively on Spectrum. Back here at Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Com uh, Complex. It is halftime. Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky up 21-10 on the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. We welcome you back up in the booth next to Rich Miano. I'm Kanoa Leahy. And, Rich, that was one of those first halves. A lot of would have's could have's and should have's from Hawaii's vantage point. Just one drive in that first half that went beyond 21 yards. Yeah, inexplicable offensive inefficiency. And then the three turnovers, three poor decisions, one by Yellen, two by Shager. You're not going to win many football games when the turnover ratio is three to zero. They're tackling better on defense. They've been put in poor field positions, and they've responded. Special teams not playing poorly. This offense has to generate some chunk plays, get in the end zone, and get some enthusiasm back on that sidelines. Yeah, you had both quarterbacks, at least both front runners, to get the start here today. Joey Yellen, who did get the start, and Braden Shager combining for three interceptions. What else do you see from the numbers, Rich? Well, that, again, is the biggest thing. You have minus two in the turnover, but also the penalties in Hawaii's offense. And you look at the total yards, 232 for Western Kentucky, only 122 for the Warriors. The Warriors have to continue to try to run the football, but make good decisions get that passing game going get maybe number one Jonah Pinocchi a few more looks all right well let's send it down to Scott Robbs he talked with both head coaches Scott what did they say all right talk to Tyson Helton first from Western Kentucky obviously was not pleased with the inability to take advantage of that turnover right before halftime he also said way too many penalties by them in the first half however one thing he was happy with the way the defense played on the other side Timmy Chang said We've got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Turnovers, penalties, those things we need to clean up. If we do, we can make this a pretty entertaining ball game in the second half. Also, by the way, he said he's going to stick with Shager at quarterback to begin the third quarter. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. There are a couple of injuries that we have been informed of. Stephen Bernal went starting left guard for Hawaii out of Kaiser High School is out. We are going to... Uh, not see him the rest of the game and also Leonard Lee we are told is going to be out the rest of the game uh, undisclosed injuries for both of those players Hawaii set to kick here at the start of this second half uh, you heard what Scott Robbs had to say Timmy Chang declaring that Braden Shager will continue to be the quarterback here at least to start this third quarter your reaction to that interesting because there were two really bad decisions bad throws by Shager but he did have a couple of nice throws in one of those drives that resulted in some points for Hawaii. Joey Yellen couldn't get anything going offensively. This is a tough decision and obviously the most important decision and that's why it wasn't settled two weeks before the first game. That's why the quarterback decision hasn't been settled this evening and I guess in the second half we'll see what happens but one of these quarterbacks is going to have to step up. So the kick by Kyler Halverson here to start things off. And quarter number three goes through the end zone. And so Western Kentucky's offense will be on the field. 
And as you alluded to when we came back from the halftime, Rich, this is a Hawaii defensive performance that has not been that bad. They have made some plays when they needed to. There's been some good fortune, certainly, with regard to special teams. Hawaii's offense just needs to get it going, but can the defense provide that stage here to start this third quarter? Yeah, they're going to need sacks. They're going to need takeaways, cause fumbles. They're going to need interceptions. But they have been tackling exponentially better. I like the play of Panay Pavi. I like what Blessman's doing up front. On the corners, they're doing a nice job on the perimeter. They have better force, fill, contain. They are executing their fundamentals, but offensively, they have to score points. It'll be a running play here to start things off in the second half for the toppers. Whatever we can do. Not much on the ground for Kai Robichaux, six foot, 215 pound sophomore from Columbus, Georgia, out of Glenwood High School. Played all 14 games as a freshman last year. Best game was actually in the Boca Raton Bowl. That was against Appalachian State. Ran for 67 yards and a touchdown. That's the way Chris Brown, the linebacker coach, uh, teaches Panay Pavi. He had a great stance. He watched the guard pull. He filled. He got off the block and made that tackle on first down. Reed lets it fly. It is complete, but immediately the pass catcher Malachi Corley is brought down by Jojo Forrest. Check that. That's Malik Hausman making the play. Yeah, Hausman, the nickelback. Does a nice job of going across the formation. You're going to see a lot of nickel. You're going to see a lot of dime. You've seen a lot of odd fronts, three-man front. Malik Hausman, the transfer from Arizona out of Bishop Gorman, was recruited on the front end by Hawaii of his collegiate career. Took the circuitous route to get to Manoa, ultimately. And that pass to the far sideline, incomplete, intended for Daywood Davis. And so Hawaii's defense holds here on the opening possession of quarter number three. Again, it's the transfer from Oregon State. JoJo with tight coverage. You're supposed to take away the inside, let them throw the out, and you're going to see number eight close on the receiver, play the upfield shoulder. That's a tough throw. Great coverage on the outside. JoJo Forrest. Dior Scott is back to receive this punt here from Tom Ellard. He gets into it, sails high into the Manoa night, and Scott fields it at the 27 and gets blown up. Didn't appear to signal for a fair catch, and so he was wide open to take a shot, and he certainly did. Great punt, great coverage, great hang time, 45-yard net, and a big-time tackle. Buckle it up. Saw a lot of helmets flying all over the place today in college football. Good tackle. Eyes up, head up, come to balance, wrap up. Six-inch rising blow. Davion Williams laying the lumber there. First and ten for Hawaii. In the 26-yard line. Again, Braden Shager. The quarterback here to start quarter number three. It's given to Diedrich Carson. He'll make that Najee Bryant Lele, and he's able to veer off to the near side, and he'll get a gain of eight. Lele gets the edge, shows the speed, uses the off arm, picks up really positive yardage. So much easier for Ian Shoemaker on second and two. You're going to see the underneath handoff. Nothing happening on that inside zone. He breaks it all the way to the outside, to his right. Good ball security. So second and two, or what he's sticking to the run game. Once again, it is Ryan Lele. Nickname, we are told, is Mojo. Hawaii trying to find its offensive mojo, and obviously one of the objectives here at the start of this third quarter is to exploit that run game. Yeah, and Solo Vaipu now in for the injured guard, and we mentioned earlier in the game on crew that he started 40 starts. So, again, a veteran, a little bit undersized in terms of what he lost in weight for COVID, but a very aggressive player. This time it's Diedrich Parson who does get his hands on the rock and he'll go forward for two. Jaquez Evans there on the stop. So steady dose of the backfield here to start this drive. Yeah, and one of the things I talked to the coaching staff about, Coach Chang and the offensive staff, is maybe they left the running game a little early, a little prematurely last week. you got to continue to pound that thing. That will open some things up as the Hilltoppers come to more of a seven-man front with this 11 personnel group. Second and eight, Shager looking to throw out of the gun, and that one is intended for Jalen Walthall. 
And he is able to haul it in. That was a heck of a stretch effort there to make the catch. The defender was very eerily close to the ball as well. Yeah, this is not a bad throw, but it's a better catch by Waffle. You're going to see him go down and get dirty on that football and get his hands underneath it. Wathal, the bright spot, the young freshman wide receiver from Texas last week with five receptions. Another running play here for Hawaii. And we have a penalty flag coming out on that snap. Again, Najee bryant Lille getting some duty. And that's going to be a penalty against Hawaii. Yeah, you know, Manning, 75, they got on that hold. Again, he played at an all-conference yeah. level. Holding, offense, number 75. 10 yard penalty, may start down. First of all, that official is joking about it, smiling, but he's got some big guns. Yeah, I mean, nobody's gonna make fun of Christian Watson for not turning his microphone on because uh, <laughs> that would be, <laughs> that would be poor execution of your own instincts of self-preservation. I think the officiating crew from the Mountain West Conference gets free memberships to 24 hour <laughs> fitness, part of their package. So the scenario, third and 13 here for Hawaii. Shager. Hit as he throws, and it is complete. It's complete for a first down. And Hawaii will get into Western Kentucky territory. Jalen Walthall again making a solid catch. Can't say enough about the mechanics of the offensive line. Watch they squeeze this thing down. Shager goes to his left, throws back across his body. Big time play by Hawaii's offense. 17 yard gain there and Hawaii going back to work. Najee bryant Lele on the carry. Shager has a big arm. It's all decision making for that young man. And he's still relatively young when you talk about quarterbacks. Yeah, sure, he had three starts last year, but he still has a long way to go. And if he can make better decisions, he'll win this battle. Here he is throwing to an open receiver. It was almost hauled in by James Phillips. He went horizontal to the turf and trying to hold that one in. Yeah. Phillips throttling down away from the safety. Shager with a little pump action. And that ball comes out hot now. And again, would have been a great catch, but as a wide receiver, you have to pride yourself. If it hits your hands, make the spectacular catch. So a big third down play here for Hawaii. Shager gets flushed, throws on the run, and this time wisely throws it out of play. He is rolled up after he lets it fly. Mike Allen coming into his kitchen, but there was an adjustment by Braden Shager as opposed to forcing a couple of throws like we saw in the first half. Cerebral, especially because they know they're in four down territory. He's running hard to his right. Decides to throw that ball out of bounds, live to play field position, possibly go for it on fourth down, but do not throw it into coverage. There's Timmy Chang talking to his young Sophomore quarterback. Well, decide not to go for it on fourth down. Matt Shipley is on to punt. Craig Burke Jr. back to receive the punt, but it winds up in the end zone. And so Western Kentucky will once again have the football when we come back. 10-24 left to play in quarter number three. Toppers up 11. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports. Sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. We all have a song to sing and a story to tell. That's the beauty of life. With the right ride, you can go anywhere and do anything. Like the capable CRV, the perfect island ride. New Honda SUVs are on the way. So reserve yours today. See your Hawaii Honda dealer today and tell them Henry sent you. To the next 125 years of families. The next 125 years of entrepreneurs. And the next 125 years of dreamers who never stop pursuing their happiness. Mahalo. 
for letting Bank of Hawaii help you pursue what makes you happy for the last 125 years. We can't wait to see and be a part of the next 125. The x-rays from your urgent care visit look good. Just stay off that leg, okay? What about my rec team? I'm all they got. Next season. Thanks, Doc. Wow. You already scheduled my PT? I love doctors who work with athletes. Does he know you tripped over a basketball? That's a sports injury. At Kaiser Permanente, we make getting care easy so you can get back on the court quicker. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Long's Drugs. How about this? Next week, the seating capacity for the stadium that Hawaii will play in, 107,601. Compare that to the capacity of this current retrofitted stadium. Uh, and they're going from the smallest to the largest in the NCAA. Nine times eight. Hawaii has eight home games. If they had 9,000 fans, 72,000 would still be 30,000 short of the big house. That's why they call it the big house. Western Kentucky's offense on the field. And this is Malachi Corley. He's been relatively quiet, certainly compared to the showing he had last week against Austin P. when he went for the hat trick, caught three touchdowns. And in fact, Western Kentucky played Austin P. in what was the first game to start of the college football season and Corley scored the first touchdown of 2022, a 25-yard touchdown catch. Panay Pavi came from the inside linebacker position all the way to the sidelines. Clearly reminiscent to 10-10. Of Darius Musau, he's lost 30 pounds. He's quicker. He's faster. That was a good tackle on the sidelines, but he is down, and that, again, is a, would be a huge loss to the Rainbow Warriors. You're going to see number one inside out tracking that hip. Nice job of Joe Forrest coming up, and Panehi still on the turf. Yeah, Panehi Pavihi, this is the second time we've seen him shaken up. Limp to the sideline earlier in the game. He did return, and there were a couple of things that occurred on that play. It looked like his shoulder and even his helmet hit the turf awkwardly. Once was 268 pounds with his hand on the ground playing defensive end. Now inside linebacker Chris Brown continues to work with these guys. And I'm not sure if it's a shoulder, a hand, upper extremity. Hawaii defense needs number one. He is not only a physical leader, he's an inspirational leader. He had four tackles in a pass breakup last week against Vanderbilt. He is tied for the team lead in tackles here in this game with five. Leonard Lee also with five tackles, but as mentioned, we were told that Leonard Lee is out for the rest of the game. Great thing about that safety position, there's a lot of depth. Fake handoff here. Reed with time, unloads down the field, has a man, it is incomplete. Oh, they were thinking big thoughts. Daywood Davis had the step, couldn't quite haul it in. Yeah, and Daywood Davis is not only a big target, but he was an Oregon transfer, and he can flat out go. When he gets that stride going, it's two steps every five yards. But again, the lights here at T.C. Ching has caused a lot of problems on punt returns, kick returns, high trajectory type of throws. Davis, six catches for 124 yards and a touchdown in the season opener last week. Third and seven here for the Hilltoppers. Coming in from Bowling Green, Kentucky. Reed pressured, and that is incomplete. Was throwing in the general direction of Malachi Corley, but Jonah Kahavai Welch was applying that much needed pressure off of the edge. Big stop by the defense. Fourth down, Dior Scott back to receive his Tom Elder punt. See the numbers on these punts here tonight for Eller. That's a low line drive, but look at the Western Kentucky roll that it gets. Inside the Hawaii 35, and that's where the Rainbow Warrior offense will get started. Still very much in this thing. 44 yard punt, 21-10. The Bowles back on the field. I'm Josh Laguana, and I've been here at Altris for 13 years. Our HR technology provides one simple platform to recruit and onboard employees, collect time and attendance, and 
process payroll. We specifically built it for Hawaii's employers, and the best part is the service behind it. You have a dedicated local support team. We are going to set it up for you, show you how to use it, and be there when you have questions. We make running a business in Hawaii simple. Heisha Hawaii is a third-generation, family-owned company whose ties to the islands date back to World War II. We offer the broadest scope of ocean transportation services between Hawaii and the mainland. And we take pride in supporting our local businesses and communities where we live and work. For our Pesha Hawaii Ohana, serving Hawaii is our business. Thursday, the defending state champs are on a road to a repeat title, but a division rival awaits, hoping to derail those plans. Kamehameha, Punahou, ILH Girls Volleyball, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. At Spectrum News, we're striving to help inform your community, providing the latest news from journalists right here in Hawaii, the local sports you love, and now the local news and weather that matter most to you. Download the all-new Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers, your community connection. Welcome back. There's some of the Hilltopper faithful that made the trip from Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's about an hour north of Nashville. Uh, and so the way the football team came to Hawaii was they actually bust down to Nashville uh, before getting on a plane and coming on out uh, to the islands. But yeah, they got a pretty solid section of red over there in the Les Murakami Stadium end zone. Yeah, Tyson Eldridge probably this whole big group of visitors that, you know, side street in. Rainbow driving, uh, you know where to go get the poke, and and it's one of those tales where he still has love and aloha for these islands, and it's a great matchup. Fake handoff here, well executed there. And as you saw, a lot of the defenders bite, and then he completes it to Jordan Murray, first catch of the game for the heralded tight end Jordan Murray, 6'5", 240 pound senior. He wears number seven just like Calvin Turner did last year. He looks like the supersized version of Calvin Turner. Yeah, by far the best body, that H-back, fullback type of body. I mean, very physical, great athleticism, and a mismatch in the passing game on the perimeter. 12-yard gain. Checking down to Dior Scott was Shager, and that'll actually be a slight loss after the play. Hawaii still looking to get that vertical passing game going. Offensive line getting time for Braden Shager. They've lost some of the speed, obviously, with Zybo. Zion Bowen's not available this evening. Shager now 8 for 12 for 80 yards. But he does have the two interceptions, including a pick six. Now on the run, throws incomplete. Running out of room to that near sideline. Jaquez Evans, donut, once again on the scene, bothering Shager. You're going to see a nice pocket initially, but then Shager has to get out, and he seems to be running full speed to his right, where you only can have receivers coming back to the football, back to the sidelines. Really only one receiver in his vision. Yeah, it looked like Dior Scott was actually trying to reestablish himself in bounds before making that catch. He had run beyond the sideline, so third and long here for Hawaii. And they're going to swing it out. This is Carson. And he gets to midfield. And that's going to be shy of a first down. It's going to be fourth and about five. And so perhaps a decision to be made here by Timmy Chang and company. Yeah, it looks like initially they're going to go for this. And What do you think? Uh, you got to think it's got to be something in terms of a quick throw, a bubble screen, a, a quick slant, a smoke throw. In 11 personnel, two by two. Maybe getting Jordan Murray out on a release pad. Quick strike to this flats. First fourth down attempt. And that is a bullet that is picked off. Goes in and out of the hands of the receiver, Dior Scott. And it'll be taken the other way. Caleb Oliver all the way to the Hawaii 15. I call the quick slant. Good throw. Receiver has to catch that football again. You got to look at the end of the day and see already four interceptions by Hawaii quarterbacks. The three, first three were on the quarterback. This one is on the receiver. Dior Scott has to get catch this football. 
Another freaky carom. We saw a couple of those last week. We have seen already multiple times that kind of bounce that has favored the opponent happen in this ball game. In this case, it was Caleb Oliver who is playing a more significant role at safety because of the injury to starting safety, A.J. Brathwaite, who had a pick last week against Austin P. Well, Caleb filling the bill with an interception of his own. Yeah, the two high safety reading the quick slant closing on the quick slant and being around the football. The more jerseys you get around the football, the better the opportunities you have. Hilltoppers opportunistic on this defensive series. Third interception for Shager, fourth for Hawaii quarterbacks. Reed looking end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown is the signal. The question is, does he come down in bounds, and is he not hurt, and did he control the ball? And there does not appear to be much movement after the catch there. Let's take another look here. A dynamic effort, both offensively and defensively. Jalen Hall, they're going to rule that he came down with it. Again, the call on the field is a touchdown, but concern for Jalen Hall's condition in addition to whether or not that was the correct call. Wow, he is in bounds, and it does look initially like a reception, but more importantly, is the young man okay? You see some of the looks of concern from the Western Kentucky fans. Silence here at Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex. And they finally roll Jalen Hall over onto his back, but for a while there, he appeared to be basically motionless. Back shoulder the throw. The catch is under further review. Like perhaps that helmet just bouncing off of the turf. It's so dangerous when you get caught off your feet at that kind of angle, but he is sitting up, and that is a great sign. But now the officials have to do their work, and they have to take a look as to whether or not this touchdown call stands. It appears to me he catches the ball. I wasn't sure if he got his feet down. He didn't, but he did get his body down in bounds. But was there control throughout the catch? Well, that's a good sign. All right, Jalen Hall popping up to his feet. But let's check with our Spectrum Sports rules analyst, George Gusman. Uh, what do you think about the call here? All right, what we're looking for here is, is three things. Number one, does he have control of the ball? Number two, does he have a body part um, inbounds? And in this case, um, does he survive the ground? The bullying on the field stands. Touchdown, Western Kentucky. That's tough to see. Well, they have confirmed the call. Would you, just from your vantage point, George, would you agree that that touchdown should stand? I don't see anything that would say. Um, I can't tell if his body part is inbounds. It's very close to the sideline. Um, he, he appears to have control of the ball. And uh, by going to the ground, he needed to survive that hit to the ground with control to make that pass complete. Well, we appreciate George uh, being available for our references how about the quick change off the pick austin reed throwing to jalen hall the dynamic catch he paid the price though and we hope that he certainly is okay point after now coming from narvison and that one is more characteristic right down the middle 28 to 10 western kentucky as hawaii starts to see that margin increase huh Ah, the party. On my way. Dessert? Stopping at Long's for a pie. Okay, cancel that. Ugh. Of course. Oh, come on. Family can be full of surprises, but luckily, my Long's has everything I need. Make Long's a part of your day. I'm officially a Zipster now. I signed up for Zipster Rewards, and now I get to feed on free Zippies. Well, me too, but what does it mean to be a Zipster? Being a Zipster rewards taking the proper preparations for a hike. Exactly. And one day, you'll have OZ cred. So being a Zipster means loving Zippies same as always, only now it's more rewarding. 
You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Download the new app and get a free Zip Pack after you sign up for Zipster Rewards and make a purchase. Good through September 30th. I stepped into the crosswalk and across the street I saw a bus coming. He kept coming at me and never stopped. They tried to say that Kenny ran in front of the bus. Then they hid the, hid the video from the bus for almost two years. But eventually we got the video and it showed the bus driver just ran him over. And it was all a, a bunch of lies. You just have to keep pushing and pushing and eventually you can get to the truth. Welcome back. Time now for the Hawaii Honda Dealers Highlight Reel, and we're looking at the play of Austin Reed. 16 of 24 for 180 yards, three touchdowns, but he has also used his feet to help create some difficulty for the Hawaii defense. Five rushes for 33 yards. Hey, look, he had some big shoes to fill in the form of Bailey Zappi, who was a record-breaking quarterback last year for Western Kentucky broke the NCAA single season mark for passing yards and touchdowns and so a high bar for Austin Reed to try to meet but he goes for four touchdown passes last week three TD passes this week hasn't always been the smoothest ride here through the first two games of this season but he continues to just kind of find a way to get the job done yeah 16 for 24 for 180 yards you mentioned the three touchdowns and that's 66 67 percent I think he's managing the game making good decisions and that's the most important Thing and seeing a lot of growth from that young quarterback. Return possibility here for Jalen Perdue on the short kick, and he is rolled up out of bounds. They're going to say that he went out of bounds at about the 31, so decent field position to start after that return by Jalen Perdue. Perdue, the thing about Perdue is he does get north and south. He has broken some kickoff returns. He has good visions. Most important thing, catch the football and get it out plus 25 or better. Yeah, 5'10", 170 pound senior from Lancaster, California. Transfer from Antelope Valley College. And so Hawaii's offense back at it. The deficit has increased though after that last interception converted into a touchdown pass for Western Kentucky. Shager continues. And he completes that one to James Phillips who had some open area around him. Make that Diedrich Parson, excuse me, Diedrich Parson on the catch, who had some open area around him, veered up the field and was able to move the sticks. Yeah, and you saw the three, and he's out wide as a wide receiver. We mentioned earlier in the show that he is a wide receiver in their empty package. That's the versatility that Diedrich Parsons brings. He knows how to run routes. He catches the ball with his hands. Uh, I like this young man. And here he is now on the swing out to the near side. And he's going to get close to another first down. So Diedrich Parson in the passing game. And you're right, that obviously caught me off guard seeing him in that position in the pass catching game on that previous play. Plus, we have commonalities. Philadelphia, walk on. you got to like this young man. And he's grown to be one of the leaders, a captain for this football team after only, you know, 12, 18 months in Hawaii. Came to Manoa via Howard where he was the top rusher for two years. Over 1,500 yards, 12 total touchdowns. As that one, perhaps a little too much chili pepper water on that pass. Yeah, much too hot. And Tamatoa Mokiao Atimalala is wide open on that slant, but you gotta take something off the throw. It's not a touch pass, but you gotta take something off your fastball. a lot of younger quarterbacks do that right it's it's a, a learned behavior to put a little more finesse on some of those throws over the middle that would an over the shoulder catch for Parson and he tries to put his shoulder pad down to get to that first down marker but he'll be denied about a couple of yards shy yeah that's a great job on the perimeter that's shock and awe by that corner you get your hands in you get your hips you move your feet you get off the block you're gonna see a phenomenal defensive play short of the first down Nice job of running inside out, but more importantly, a big hit on the sidelines by the defensive corner. You know, that was B.J. Wagner making several plays here this evening. Fourth down, Hawaii going for it, down 28-10. Closing in on six minutes left to play in the third quarter. Unbalanced line. What do you think of the call here? I think they're gonna go weak side with the H-back coming back through the formation. It's gonna be a running play, and it's gonna be a first down. 
Najee Bryant Lele getting the call and getting the job done. And if you want to call me Tony Romo, I'm okay with that because the H-back did come through. It wasn't inside zone, even though it went through the strong side. It's designed to go inside. And how did I know on fourth down? I'm close with Coach Chang. I know what he likes in those scenarios. I love how you make the fourth down <laughs> conversion somehow about you. That is such a Rich Miano move. But you did call it, and that was a conversion for Hawaii that keeps this drive alive. So first and 10 now. Ball just inside the Western Kentucky 45. Shager with flags plenty coming out. Play continues, still looking downfield. Now he'll just throw it harmlessly out of bounds, but there's a whole lot of laundry on the turf here in Manoa. We'll see what this is associated with. It's got to be a hold. Good look there at Timmy Chang, Clay Helton. We talked about their relationship. Both had some very kind words to say about each other. A lot of praise there, a lot of respect. Timmy Chang says, you know, he was a player at the time. He said, hey, look, you know, you know when you see a young coach, if they have the possibility to Personal maybe become foul. something special. Face mask, offense, number 75, 15-yard penalty and a remain first down. And Timmy Chang saying that's what he identified in Tyson Helton. Take a look at this face mask here, top of your screen. El Manning. Yeah, right there, he gets beat on the punch and then he reaches out and grabs the mask and you see a bunch of flags. Manning playing a great game last week. That's the second penalty on the tackle who has close to 50 career starts, started as a true freshman, one of the outstanding seniors, another guy who's very valuable to this offensive line and this offensive football team. Uh, he has been dubiously conspicuous here in this game, however. 5-15 left to play here in the third in Hawaii. First and a country mile. Trigger finally throws it underneath. It is caught. Complete to Caleb Phillips, the other tight end. He's definitely looking downfield. He's looking to go vertical, and there's nothing there, so give credit to the coverage and he checks it down offensive line squeezing things down inside plenty of time going through the progression check down receivers Caleb Phillips the tight end transfer from Stanford so this is second and 20 Shaker steps up has room in front of him throws on the run and that is caught Nice catch there by Chuki Hines while he falls to the field. So Hines, good looking frosh, 6'1", 175 pounder from Houston, Texas. He has had his moments certainly in practice, and here he is coming up with the catch. And I think it's his first career catch, and he runs 22 miles per hour. The fastest Rainbow Warrior, the flying 10. This guy can stretch the field, 6'1", 175 pounds, a good looking young freshman. That brings up now third and four. He'll keep it on the ground, but that one is going to be stopped short of the line to gain. Brian Lele on the carry. Trey Shaw there defensively for Western Kentucky. Straight inside zone play. Not a lot of room to run. You can see the inside backers mugging the A-gaps, trying to confuse the protection then the defensive tackles get down in that eagle position where they're both in one technique deep throw by Shager has a guy in the area but it falls incomplete I was looking downfield this time it was James Phillips in the area and you mentioned James Phillips being from the Valley Antelope Valley Lancaster the home of the great 33 Marco Johnson this is a pretty good throw off his back foot but you see how tight it is and it's a catchable football that's why you like to have those tall guys on the outside the Jason Rivers the Ashley Lilies So I believe they ruled that that was an interception. Another one off the tip. I'm not sure we're going to get a chance to see this replay, but obviously the exchange of field position. That caught a lot of people by surprise. 
That may have been Caleb Oliver again. Again, this is not on the quarterback. It looks like it hits the ground right there. He does catch it, but was it the ground? That is an incredible. If that up by interception is under further review. If that turns into another interception, you're talking about some of the unluckiest bounces you could ever see for a football team through two weeks of a college football season. Yeah, we mentioned this is not on Shager either. The receiver has to make this catch, but you talk about being around the football and making the big play. Does it hit his arm? Oh my goodness. Golly. The crowd went quiet and uh, so did this booth. So Caleb Oliver comes up with the play again. That's now the fifth interception of this football game? That would be number five, indeed. Two spectacular plays by the defense, three bad decisions by the quarterback. All right, well, let's check with our Spectrum Sports rules analyst, George Gussman. Uh, what do you see in these replay angles, George? Well, I think the question here is, is, is the, does the ball touch the ground at any time? And that's what replay is looking at right now. It doesn't appear so. The defender has control. Oh my Ooh, goodness. The ball, did never, not touch the ball ground. never touches the ground. That is uh, the receiver amazing. has control and has a foot inbounds and interception. Great job by the Spectrum camera guys to catch yeah. that. That was much more visible. And I think this play is going to stand as called. I'll take one more look at this. This and is it, only not touching the ground. This seems pretty clear here that it doesn't touch the ground from this angle, right? Right there. Yeah, it's. Pops back up. I mean, that's a great call by the, by the call in official. Just a great call to let the play play out and see the, the complete result of the play. Excellent yeah. job. Yeah, that was some prime officiating right there and caught everybody by surprise and off guard. Second interception, meanwhile, for Caleb Oliver. Wow. Five turnovers. The ruling of the catch stands. The ruling of the catch stands. First down. Christian Watson waiting for the music over the PA system to be turned down. Guys, don't don't mess with this guy. I mean, look at look at him. Look at the way the black and white stripes just bend around that torso. Don't don't mess around with him. But as he mentioned, the uh, the call will stand. Now you look at the field position here for Western Kentucky, and this works in some ways, I guess you could suggest, kind of like a deep punt can Hawaii take advantage here, but I mean, you talk about the bounces, a snake-bitten type of series of caroms for Hawaii through two weeks of football. Time to call the kahu. It is time to bless this team, perhaps, here in the early stages of 2022. No question about that, because we've talked about bad decision making by the quarterback, but those are just unfortunate bounces, and the Hawaii receivers have to catch the football. And you know, no excuses. Zion Bowen's not here. Jonah Panoki was injured all week long, not getting a lot of playing time. Some young receivers in the mix. Jared Ursua, the wide receiver coach, does a nice job. I've watched him at practice, and just gotta catch the football. Second and six here for the toppers. Again, tucking and running is Reed. And he gets lit up coming in like a cannonball was Ty Marsh, but we're going to have a penalty flag. And you see some of the reaction after the fact from Austin Reed. Chance to see on the replay if it's a late hit, personal foul, helmet to helmet. Yeah, I'm not sure it's not helmet to helmet by Ty Marsh, number four. Looks like helmet to helmet. I'm not sure. Could be on the celebration. This is a long discussion among the officials. There is contact with the head. It's not egregious. But, I don't and, think it's malicious. And you also have to look at whether or not that is the crown of the helmet. Yes, the top part of the helmet. And he's coming with the shoulder as well. After the play, personal foul, late hit with targeting. Defense, number four. That 15-yard penalty is added to the end of the run. Automatic first down, 
the previous play and under further review. All right, they're going to take a look at targeting in addition to the late hit. So let's, uh, if we can, open up the mic for our Spectrum Sports rules analyst, George Gusman. So a lot to unpack here, George. Uh, where do we start here? I think the first thing we want to do is see if he's a defenseless player. Um, the question here is, has he started a slide? And if the runner has started a slide, then he is deemed to be defenseless. And that is, in my mind, the question here. Because if he's defenseless, then any hit into the, the neck and the shoulder area um, is targeting. In my humble opinion, it's not getting overturned because, again, the safety of this. Now, will he be ejected, I think, is also part of this whole deliberation. Correct. I mean, he would be disqualified. Um, all targeting plays need to be confirmed. We are no longer dealing with targeting on a stance basis. Well, let's here's the call. Let's listen in. After further review, replay confirmed the call of targeting against number four of Hawaii. Players disqualified from the game by rule. George, can you now talk about how this goes to another committee in terms of being out for the next week's game based upon their ruling? And this being the second half. Correct. So there is a new rule this year that if Hawaii feels like it was not targeting, they can send it up to the Mountain West, who will then review it. And if they feel uh, in favor of what Hawaii is saying, they can send it to the national coordinator, who will also look at it and make a final ruling. So glad we have George because there are rule changes every year and knowing the rule book is so important. And we've had so many challenges and, and interesting situations thus far. So as the dust settles, Western Kentucky goes back to work. It's Malachi Corley. Taken down by Peter Manuma. Not to mention how many times we were wrong last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's good to have an experienced official like George Gusman. This guy has called national championship games and he's sitting up here in the booth with the two of us. It is a major downgrade for George. It is a major upgrade for us. We are blessed. Peter Manuma from Campbell on that tackle. Good to see 33 involved in the mix. Big handoff and time to throw for Reed. It is complete. Craig Burt Jr. into Hawaii territory. And this is starting to feel at least a little bit like the opener against Vanderbilt where you're starting to see perhaps some fatigue on defense. You're starting to see some big chunk plays by the offense. Yeah, they're trying to go quick too, but I think that was a flea flicker. I mean, that was interesting development offensively. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that, but there is an equipment problem. There's the replay. Yeah, it's a flea oh, flicker. Oh, you're right. That was uh, in a phone booth that they pulled that maneuver off, too. Yeah, not your normal flea flicker where it's a, a vertical route, kind of a seam route. Again, Tyson Hilton not afraid to pull out, get deep into that playbook. Yeah, they're getting jiggy with it now. Here it is, first and 10. He didn't ball fly the way to punt. <laughs> Reed stepping up, throws to the far sideline, and is that picked off? JoJo Forrest. Ruling on the field, the interception, first down, Hawaii. Make, make that Malik Hausman, excuse me, six-foot senior from Las Vegas, Nevada. The transfer from Arizona coming up big when Hawaii needed it most defensively. Yeah, Austin Reed throws this ball on the inside. You have to throw this ball on the outside. The receiver has to come back to the football, but give credit to Malik Hausman. Tough catch. Really a nice job again. his hands underneath, rolling over with the ball, securing the catch. Hawaii's first INT of the season. Nice to see number nine, Malik Hausman, not making a house call, but making a very nice interception, crucial for Hawaii's defense. Can Hawaii's offense now take advantage? Shager remains the quarterback. Over the middle, it's Murray able to go down and snag that one with those big old hands of his. Yeah, and he delivers the blow, right? He, you, DBs are going to come in low on big number seven, and he's going to lower his shoulders. He's a physical type of player. Did a nice job last week and this week at the point of attack. 
in terms of blocking, and that was the big question. Now he's lined up outside, double puck position, six yards from the tight tackle. Shager sets the feet, and he'll send that one well out of bounds. One thing you are seeing defensively from the defensive coordinator is inside type of games, trying to flush Shager out of the pocket because he's not that mobile. And then you're seeing the contained person come late to make sure they can pull the quarterback up, putting some pressure on Shager. Final minute of this third quarter. Tyson Summers, the defensive coordinator, doing a nice job of mixing things up. Give is to Parson, and he's dead to rights. And they were coming. And, and whether that's a run dog or a pass dog, the analytics tell them what Hawaii does on third down based upon what they did last week. And overloading, protection. See big 23 unblocked. Yeah, Will Ignat getting in there first tough for that offensive line to pick up all the stunting and dogging and pressures they were seeing by Tyson Summers, the defensive coordinator. And that's one guy that doesn't get a lot of micromanaging because Tyson Hilton allows his defensive coordinator to call the game plan. So Upton Stout back to receive and kind of a worst case scenario here right at a time where Hawaii is reeling a little bit and has gotten some very unfortunate luck. A quick possession for the offense you start to wonder about the fatigue defensively for these guys second half that seemed to surface last week let's see if they can do something different here as we enter quarter That'd number four quarter. 28 to 10 western kentucky over the rainbow warriors Heisha Hawaii is a third-generation, family-owned company whose ties to the islands date back to World War II. We offer the broadest scope of ocean transportation services between Hawaii and the mainland. And we take pride in supporting our local businesses and communities where we live and work. For our Heisha Hawaii Ohana, serving Hawaii is our business. watching Spectrum Sports, the home of University of Hawaii Sports. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. With new cars arriving daily, now's the time to get in and get away. Now, get 2.99% APR for 48 months on some of our most popular models. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealer. I love how in Hawaii we are all connected. That's Layla. She just bought this house. Hey, welcome. And that's her first Hawaiian loan officer, Gloria. Oh, you know I hooked my girl up. Of course, they're friends now. Ron crushed it at Gloria's wedding. Oh. Hey, thanks, Marcus. So I booked in a play tonight. Yeah, you. First Hawaiian Bank keeps you connected to your finances and a whole lot more. Always ready to compete. On every play, every point. With a whatever it takes mentality. Don't miss Rainbow Wahine Volleyball. Only on OC16. Exclusively on Spectrum. Welcome back. Let's check out tonight's Heineken head-to-head -head stat line. Western Kentucky, 20 points off of turnovers. Hawaii supplying five turnovers, all interceptions. Four by Braden Shager, one by the starting quarterback tonight, Joey Yellen. Shager has played the majority of the game, 14 to 23 for 132 yards and the four picks. Yeah, and statistics can be misleading. And you know, I always talk about turnover ratio, cause turnovers possessing the ball offensively, taking away defense. Whenever your turnover ratio is plus three, 
there's a huge chance you're going to win that football game. And right now, the Hilltoppers have been much more aggressive, more around the football, attacking. And Hawaii's defense hasn't been bad. It's the offense that cannot give the football away. Another great play fake by Western Kentucky. And this one will go for some significant yardage. Joey Belgian. 6'3", 250-pound redshirt junior in the state of New Jersey out of Delaware Valley High School. Once he got into that second level, third level, he just lowered the shoulder and carried a bunch of Rainbow Warriors. And again, going up tempo, these Hilltoppers, they do not let your defense catch its breath too frequently. Yeah, nice play there by 17, Isaiah Tufunga, not picking up that personal foul, not hitting the quarterback out of bounds pursuing the quarterback but you're exactly right western kentucky looks like they're fresh they have great enthusiasm well, we've seen a little bit of everything in this game right from muff punts to field goals that bounce off of the upright to targeting penalties a whole lot of penalties as a matter of fact and a whole lot of replay reviews yeah, yeah and really sloppy that first quarter with those 10 penalties some of the craziest bounces that have negatively impacted the Rainbow Warriors through these first two weeks of football. Prior to the play clock is firing. Western Kentucky will take the first charge time of the half. 30 seconds. So 14.05 left to play in the fourth. Another good look at Tyson Helton. Uh, the stories that you and Tyson have <laughs> going back. I mean, it was, it was, as mentioned, fun to see you guys reuniting. Uh, when we talked with him earlier in the week. But you had a story that was, uh, that actually, it, it hit him pretty emotionally. Yeah, he had just gotten married to April and had his wedding ring on. We were on Maui in a coaching clinic. Mel Delora and I convinced him to jump off the Sheraton Black Rock. We didn't tell him to put his hands up as he entered the water from 40 feet. He loses his wedding ring. He has to explain that to his newlywed. April that he has no wedding ring he's with the boys in Maui and uh, he was so nervous and uh, he uh, was a lot of fun to be around he was a young buck during those times and we took advantage of his youth <laughs> he also commented on how you were one of those coaches at least in his time here that would always run with the players like whatever running or conditioning drills they would do you were right there running with them kind of like dan campbell of the detroit lions if anybody's watched uh hard knocks doing the up downs and uh yeah that's the, you're still kind of like that 60 and still trying to do push-ups <laughs> and pull-ups here's reed and that is a perfect strike he is in his bag right now the connection to daywood davis yeah, you've seen a lot of combat routes. you've seen a lot of sprint action waggle action getting out to his right and watch him throw this football the toughest throws for a defensive back, especially the corners, are those deep comeback routes. It takes a strong arm, but that's part of the package. You're not seeing much verticality by the receivers. You're seeing a lot of sprint out, perimeter passes, comeback routes, some mesh concepts. And some run and shoot concepts. Here, empty backfield on this formation. And with time, Reed finds his man. It is complete, and again, it is a first down play for the Hilltoppers. Dalvin Smith this time on the receiving end. But yeah, some of the influence of, of being on the same coaching staff as June Jones, right? Even some of the terminology, choice, divide. It's part of this scheme here for the Hilltoppers. Here's Reed looking to run again. And he gets gang tackled inside the 10. True switch. And it really comes from the dad, Kim Helton, who obviously had a great relationship, coach with June Jones of the USFL. And then young Tyson comes along and is with Nick Rolovich and Timmy Chang. And he's like, he's not going to get rid of that run and shoot concept because he knows it works out of 10 personnel. You mentioned dad, Kim, obviously a longtime coach. Was coach at the University of Houston from 93 to 99. What I liked is the fact that he still comes around practices and he's old school and look out and Tyson warns his players, dad's going to be here this week. Yeah. Both Kim and Tyson have won Conference USA Coach of the Year awards. First time that's happened in the history of the league. Meanwhile, Western Kentucky continuing to apply the pressure. Kai Robichaux bursts in from seven yards out to add to this lead. The only other coaching duo, father and son, Bobby Bowden and Terry Bowden. 
only two times in the history of college football. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct, Western Kentucky, number 16 for Tawny. That 15 yard penalty will be a force on the kickoff. Touchdown. That's number 16, first on sportsmanlike conduct out of the game. Yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct actually being treated like other personal foul penalties here in 2022 as well. With two, that's ejection from the football game. Disqualified. And, and I like that. If you're not smart enough once you get that first one to do something that hurts your team and you're that selfish, you need to sit by one of the coaches on the sidelines. Braden Narvison on for the point after. And so that makes the score 35 to 10. Western Kentucky. They have found the traction here in Manoa. Huh? Ah, the party. On my way. Dessert? Stopping at Long's for a pie. Okay, cancel that. Ugh. Of course. Oh, come on. Family can be full of surprises, but luckily, my Long's has everything I need. Make Long's a part of your day. The newly refurbished Ala Moana Hotel by Mantra. Conveniently located and always an island favorite. Celebrating 50 years. Now make it yours. This is our hotel. This is our hotel. This is so much more than my hotel. This is our hotel. Ala Moana Hotel, where Kama Aina always gets the best rate. Use promo code LOCALS ONLY. Aloha. For many of us, 2020 has been such a rough year. From loved ones losing their jobs or having to make adjustments in our lives that we never thought we'd make. Our strength has been tested like never before. From all of us at IBEW Local 1186, I know we stand behind you and will be there every step of the way to keep us safely connected and powered up. Take care of each other. Mahalo. Here's a look at the scoring drive. Six plays, 64 yards, two minutes, 25 seconds, and Kai Robichaud doing the honors. Taking it in for the score from seven yards out. 35-10 Western Kentucky. And so Hawaii now playing against their opponent, also playing against the scoreboard as well as the clock here with now 12.35 left to go. Yeah, and similar to last week, defense has been on the field too long, and some of that is the inability to get it off. Some of it is the fact that the offense has turned the ball over five times, but way too many plays. And what I think Tyson Helton is going to be happy about is the rushing attack, averaging 4.7 yards per carry. Last week, under right around three yards, they weren't physical. They wanted to establish the run, become more efficient with that running game, and I think they have this evening. Jalen Purdue getting under this kick. A short kick takes it just inside the 20. Here's to the far sideline. This is going to be a solid return. And he is tossed upside down in front of that Western Kentucky bench. Yeah, and the reason why that kick was short, too, because they kicked off from the 20 based upon the personal foul. But you're right. Good return. Good field position for the Warriors. Let's watch the end of this play. It's the kicker, 46. Yeah, uh, he, he doesn't make too many tackles. He was just happy trying to get <laughs> off the ground. Yeah, that was Corey Munson. Didn't look like he grabbed uh, Purdue in any way. It was just they were trying to both sort of get up. And meanwhile, Purdue was still between steps midair. So no harm, no foul there. Here is Shager, fake handoff, completes it to Murray. He gets bent backwards after a gain of about three. So how do we assess or begin to assess the performance of this Hawaii offense? Again, Braden Shager has played the majority at quarterback. Would you 
perhaps suggest that at least Hawaii has found its QB1, or is that still going to be something that is an open competition, you would believe? He has made some good throws, but he has made some poor decisions as well. But if you just look aesthetically, he has a prettier football. He's a big, tall, strong quarterback. And Joey Yellen doesn't sometimes look the part, although he's 6'3", 225. But again, here you go, Shager completing a pass downfield. A strike to Jalen Walpole but right on cue. But, but it, this is not a decision that's going to be easy for Coach Chang. And that's the problem is you have to find quarterback one to get him the proper reps to make good decisions and be comfortable. You see him, good enough ability, athletics, uh, athletic ability to scramble and then throw the football on the run to the receiver. 31-yard gain there. Here is Diedrich Parsons spinning and whirling his way forward for positive yardage. Yeah, Timmy Chang telling us it's it's kind of on the guys competing for the job. Someone needs to step up, assert themselves, as he was saying, right? They need to kind of snatch the reins. He compared it to his first year in 2000. Nick Rolovich had first come to the program. Timmy Chang was also on the team. And he said that it took us a while. We sort of jockeyed back and forth for someone to grab the reins. Timmy ended up grabbing it his freshman year and then he ran into some injury in his sophomore campaign nick rolovich then of course took over in 2001 and uh, just absolutely lit the world on fire and that sort of was his calling card uh, in his quarterbacking career he even said hey look you fast forward to 2005 colt brennan and tyler gronke a similar thing at some point somebody in this competition has to step up and grab the reins no question well said and, and that will be the biggest dilemma this football program has moving forward is who is the quarterback and it, i don't think it's been clear cut but i think they have to make a decision moving forward good run there by Najee bryant lele yeah, bryant lele showing some physical toughness physicality showing the ability to spin to get lower his pads to secure the football when he feels the contact and get positive yardage you gotta like the fact that hawaii is still being physical on offense Second down and three here for the Bows. It is a give once again up the middle. And that is going to be close to the goal line. And what you're knocking on the door, Diedrich Parson on the carry this time. Well, maybe this at least an encouraging sign. Hawaii, the power game up the middle behind these big fellas up front. A give again. To the back, it's Parson stretching for the goal line. Does he get in? No signal. They're going to call him just short of breaking the plane. Yeah, I think the mechanics of the official is proper here. They got a good angle. It was the first contact. You're going to see when Diedrich goes down where the ball is right there, and then he stretches over the line, but he's down by contact. All right, bit of a jumbo package here for Hawaii. Caleb Phillips, the H-back, Najee Bryant Lele in the backfield. He gets the rock, puts his helmet down, and charges through, busts across the goal line for a touchdown. So Bryant Lele having himself a ball game. We do have a penalty flag, however. Bill Manning, 75. You gotta watch on the replay now. Good hard nose football. Good running by Lele. And then right here at the very end with the celebration, you see 75 with a two-arm extension. And then the celebration after. That would be the third penalty on 75. And he's a better football player than that. Yeah, this offensive line. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct. Hawaii, number 75. That 15 yard penalty that forced on the kickoff. Touchdown, and that's number 75, unfortunately sportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. So the touchdown stands, obviously, but this offensive line, Rich, really the gel that held this whole thing together through the Todd Graham fiasco into the Timmy Chang hiring. Uh, the offensive line unit was the one unit with all of these high-profile players that under the circumstances felt like it was better for them to transfer out. This group decided we're going to stay together. We're going to keep it here. The brotherhood is most real among us. Yeah, the most cohesive 
the most experienced. You're right about that offensive line. And it starts with Aliki Tanavasa, the newly named captain, the transfer from Eastern Illinois. Well, the offensive line with the surge to allow for the touchdown plunge by Najee Bryant Lele. Hawaii trying to hang around. If I put up solar panels, I could save some serious cash. Help the planet too. I'm gonna talk to Julie at the bank. Ah, oh, hi, Julie. Everyone needs a Julie in their life. Get your banker at asbhawaii.com. McDonald's local breakfast platters, just like you remember. Ba da ba ba ba. This month on OC16 and XCast, the state's best hit the hardwood and rise above the net as the girls' volleyball season begins with a bang. Then the prep football season heats up as teams jockey for position in the push for the playoffs. The biggest games, the best matchups, all month long. The best in high school sports, only on OC16 and XCast, exclusively on Spectrum. There's a look at the scoring drive for Hawaii. Eight plays, 58 yards, 317 off the clock. And it was capped by that Najee bryant Lele touchdown plunge. He now has 13 rushes for 64 yards and that tug. Edric Parson, 13 rushes for 31 yards. And our very high resolution cameras able to actually see the texture of the moon here on this Manoa night. So beautiful, the sunset was beautiful, but if you're not aware of the brand, Western Kentucky football, 597 wins coming into this football game. Just 20 years ago, the anniversary of winning the 1AA National Championship, and they built them something special in a perennial contender in Conference USA. Yeah, kind of an anniversary year for both of these programs, right? You had, as you alluded to, the 20 years ago exploits of Western Kentucky as that return gets the Hilltoppers to midfield, Michael Matheson on the return. But you also have the 15-year anniversary of the 2007 undefeated campaign and obviously going to the BCS Bowl and, and the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. The 30-year anniversary of that incredible 92 team that went all the way to the Holiday Bowl. They defeated Illinois in that game. And so uh, that'll be a fun debate. I think that team's actually going to be officially and formally honored at the Wyoming game here because Wyoming was the game uh, in that 92 season where they clinched the then Western Athletic Conference title. As this one is a handoff, which will go for some big yards. It's given to Kai Robichaux. It's kind of serving as the closer, if you will, here for Western Kentucky out of the backfield. Uh, but that's a great debate. Maybe that's something we will uh, we will save for another time. But 92 versus 07, of course, you had a vested interest as a member of the coaching staff in 07. Uh, who you got? Well, I'm going to go, obviously, with June Jones in 2007. But Bob Wagner, give him credit. John Venary, that whole Mike Seawalk and Paul Johnson, they did a wonderful job offensively, and they played great defensive special teams. So I'm a big fan of Bob Wagner. He was my defensive back coach, so no disrespect to Bob <laughs> Wagner and that 92 team because that was a high for this program, something that we should always remember. Yeah, that front line on defense, Ma'atanu Vasa to Ase Falmui, Junior Tongo Wai. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, it, that was an impressive run. I happened to be playing in the National Football League, but trust me, when you're in the National Football League and your college team is doing well, I'm wearing my H stuff <laughs> constantly back in 92. Second and five, how about the humble brag by my man Rich Miano <laughs> on his birthday? Now I just got to figure out what team I was playing for. <laughs> well, 11 years in the NFL, man. There is uh, no denying that accomplishment. This is Daywood Davis. Able to spin away from the first would-be tackler. Noah Kamana, 47, with a big tackle. And that's how you tackle. You 
come to balance, you drop your hips, you keep your eyes up. Watch 47 on this smoke throw out on the perimeter. Jojo Forrest misses the tackle. There's the safety overlapping and beautiful poetry in motion in terms of tackling a clinic. Noah well, coming on out of Punahou. You talk about a circuitous route to get to the University of Hawaii. Small college football player. Oh, this one right up the gut. This is Robichaux again, and he is starting to drag tacklers with him. It was Hugh Nelson and Kamana going for a ride that time. And Isaiah Tufanga also on that tackle. But again, Western Kentucky going to continue to pound that rock, work on the running game, work on the physicality. There's nothing more demoralizing to a defense than not being able to stop the run when you know that's what they're doing offensively. You're loading up the box. You're trying to get off blocks. You're trying to come downhill, and they're still picking up positive yardage. And an interesting adjustment, right? Hawaii started with the three down linemen. They were going heavy in the defensive secondary, nickel and dime packages. And so here, as we head down the home stretch of this game, you see Western Kentucky deciding we're just going to keep it on the turf against perhaps a slightly worn down defense for the amount of time that it's been on the field. Uh, and so it's kind of interesting, the approach here to trying to close this thing if you're the Hilltoppers. No question. And, and that's kind of the brand of football. You have to have that physicality. That offensive line enjoys the run black, blocking uh, schematics and, and philosophy. And pass blocking is a different art, and they can pass block as well, but they want to get down and dirty. First and ten. And keep it on the ground again. Kai Robichaux breaking tackles left and right. Dives forward to the three, maybe two yard line. Inside zone with a little power action by the guard pulling around. Tell you what, they had a long flight. They came in late. They weren't here all week, and they're still battling. And we are told they are planning on leaving immediately after the game. Yeah, that's a commando type of trip. Last week, Vandy comes in on Monday, stays for like a week, SEC money. These guys came in late. And they're leaving after the game this evening. Well, we had a penalty flag on the field on that play. Illegal substitution, 12 on the field. Defense, at the distance to the goal. Results in a first down. So it's going to be first and goal from awfully close here for Western Kentucky. We we're being told that tonight was officially a sellout here at Clarence TC Ching Athletic Complex. Please the game clock to 651. 651. 9,000. 9,346, the official number. That is the max capacity here at this facility. And look, patience is a virtue, and it appears as though this is a work in progress. In the first year of head coach Timmy Chang, Robichaux wrapped up. He'll be denied access, at least initially, on first and goal. Nice job stepping up there by Jonah Kahavai Welch out of Kamehameha Kapalama. Yeah, and obviously people know 13 starters that would have been potential starting this year are in different programs. You, you lost 19 players to the transfer portal. There's 53 new yeah, players you have on an, campus. Yeah, you have an NFL team's worth of newcomers to this program. Yeah, I don't want to sound dramatic, but it's a new play. It's a new director. It's a new star. It's new everything here in Manoa. And it's going to take a while to rebuild this program to the proud history that you talked about. Reed going to keep it himself, and he bursts through for the touchdown. So Austin Reed with three touchdown passes now has a touchdown run and Western Kentucky adds to the lead. This is a good Western Kentucky team. There's no question and very prolific on offense. And then you saw defensively, they get to the football. They understand the importance of stopping the run and really blitzing, dogging. I mean, they're an attacking style of defense and 
They'll be competitive in Conference USA like they have been the last three years. The preseason picked third, and this year, interestingly enough, Conference USA eliminating the divisions. So they're going to be like the Mountain West next year where they eliminate the West and Mountain divisions. They're just going to be one league, and so that promotes the top two finishers playing each other in the championship game. So the point after is good. Austin Reed with the perfect read to get into the end zone. If you're a parent, you visit the doctor a lot. But at Kaiser Permanente, they make things convenient. I can see my doctor, pick up prescriptions, and just get more done all at the same place. It's hard to take off from work, so being able to make appointments online based on our schedule is great. I also love not having to remember our entire medical history for each doctor we see. I'm a busy dad, but they make it so simple. That's what truly sets them apart. to the next 125 years of families. The next 125 years of entrepreneurs. And the next 125 years of dreamers who never stop pursuing their happiness. Mahalo for letting Bank of Hawaii help you pursue what makes you happy for the last 125 years. We can't wait to see and be a part of the next 125. I stepped into the crosswalk and across the street I saw a bus coming. He kept coming at me and never stopped. They tried to say that Kenny ran in front of the bus. Then they hid the, hid the video from the bus for almost two years. But eventually we got the video and it showed and the bus driver just ran him over. And it was all a, a bunch of lies. You just have to keep pushing and pushing and eventually you can get to the truth. the uh, games that can be played here, some of the hands-on experiences that are uh, granted and afforded to the fans that come out to these University of Hawaii football games. Spin the wheel, see if you win. American Savings Bank, shout out to Gabe Lee, Executive Vice President, also on the Board of Regents. A lot of fun pregame. <laughs> you know what, they have done under the circumstances, yes. an exceptional job of putting together an atmosphere that is fun, that is interactive, as you see, fan-friendly. They've got all kinds of food. 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 I, mean, I mean, better than any stadium when you think about the local food vendors. I mean, if you want to come eat the delicious food, come to T.C. Ching. Kick fielded by Jalen Perdue, and the ball comes out, and it is picked up by Western Kentucky. Purdue still down on the ground. And that was Matthew Flint who scooped up the football. He looks to be out in plenty of time. Take another look here. Wow. I mean, you just think about turnovers. The sting of some of these bounces and the freakiness of some of these caroms just going right to the opposing team. We saw it last week, a couple of fumble recoveries just snatched out of the air, returned for touchdowns. I mean, we have seen some crazy interceptions here in this game as far as what you would have to say are just oddities of ricochets. This is know, number two, Davion Irvin Poindexter on the carry. Didn't think they won the special teams last week, the field position, all those other things. This week they get that muffed punt, turn it into three points, should have been seven. But that right there, you know, again, special teams has to be special. You have to win hidden yards. You have to possess the football. You have to take it away. And now the special teams is contributing to this loss. Thomas Sheffield, the special Hawaii. teams coordinator, Hawaii. associate Hawaii. head coach. Hawaii. Can't be real happy with the After return game. To the goal, automatic first down. That's number 47. First of sports play, Connor foul the game. A little frustration starting to injury. maybe bubble over a little bit here. I mean, this is tough. This is a tough experience for a team. It's a tough experience, particularly for a young team. And we can talk about some of the inexperience there. Even their veteran players aren't necessarily guys who have a ton of starts under their belt. 
And so this is asking a lot of these guys to hang in there. They have definitely maintained a unified front to this point. As this is given to Irvin Poindexter right up the gut. And he is uncontested in the pay dirt. And I think they travel close to 6,000 miles to the big house next week against a team, Michigan, that is loaded with athletes and uh, off to a great start. And there is the kiss to the crowd. Perhaps more of a kiss goodbye from Davion Irvin Poindexter. Talk about that as that PAT goes through that trip to Ann Arbor next week. 8,920 mile trek to play at Michigan. The six trips on the road this year total 37,080 air miles. Talking about going back Round and forth. Trip. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously Hawaii has set the all time record of 47,000 miles traveled the that year was they went to Australia. Yeah. Then they went to Michigan. Rolo's first year. Yeah. Yes, and but they'll travel 35 to 40,000 miles every year and that is a huge disadvantage, but one you can't complain about. You just got to buckle it up and come to play in next week's game. That's going to be just overwhelming in terms of athletic disparity. So 49-17 now the score. So Jalen Perdue right back out there after the fumble on that last kickoff. We, uh, we asked about Western Kentucky, the brand, and they were talking about quarterback U. They were talking about the fact that they've been competing for championships, bowl games the last three years, successful in the transfer portal. Yeah, I mean, Tyson Helton wasted no time, right? They won nine games his first year there, and that was after a season where they had only accumulated three Good victories. Turnaround. So a great Plus turnaround six. there. And like you mentioned, three straight bowl game appearances. On-campus stadium, very nice workout facility, nutritional centers. I mean, that's, this is a big-time program, and people don't know the name in Hawaii necessarily, but this is a very good football program led by that guy who I think is going to go on to bigger and better things in terms of He's, he's an aspiring head coach of a Power 5 conference type of school. Here's Shager. And he completes it. And he's going to go for some decent yardage here, all the way to about the 38-yard line. Almost a prevent, prevent type of defense, two-man front, dropping nine guys, letting you catch the ball underneath, and just compressing and constricting on the defensive side of the ball. That's Jordan Johnson on the catch, 5'10", Frosh from Dallas, Texas. Shager throws over the middle. That's another completion. Johnson again. Yeah, Johnson's a good running back from Texas, out in that empty formation, coming out of the backfield. Very versatile. When you talk about the positioning for a team or a program like Western Kentucky, right? Uh, very much considered still in the mid-major category group of five program uh, but certainly on the come up and now maybe more opportunities for programs like that that can compete for conference championships with the recent vote by the college football playoff board uh, to expand the tournament to 12 teams by 2026 they also recommended that the commissioners and management committee actually explore in, uh, implementing expansion as soon as 2024 so this thing could be expanded in the very near future you would have basically six spots the top spots for the top six ranked conference champions and then six at large berths to fill out that 12 team format and you would imagine there would be some room for those mid-major programs to get in there you would hope that's the case and i'm surprised that they didn't go to eight teams and they went all the way to 12 pleasantly surprised and i think college football the money and television and the excitement of having those teams is going to be a good thing for this game as we move forward great stretch fetch there james phillips Phillips, nice job, good throw, good touch throw over the linebacker or the flat defender's head. And you're going to see man-to-man -man coverage and great throw, good oh, catch. I'm not sure he's toes, not toes out, out of, of bounds. bounds. And they did, in fact, decide ultimately that that was an incompletion. And George Gushman told me also, even if the toe is in and then the heel comes down after, it's still ruled out of bounds. I would have thought that if the toe was in, and then the hill comes down, but no, he's out of bounds as long as part of that foot is touching the white. 
This one is thrown backwards. Tylen Hines unable to handle it. And so thankfully for Hawaii. Ruling on the field, the incomplete pass. Third down. It rolled out of bounds. They actually ruled that, as you heard there, an incomplete pass. Looked like maybe he threw it behind the Could line. Could have been a lateral, but it's good to see 24, the freshman running back from Texas, because he does have ability. He has vision. He has quickness. And you've got to get these young people into the mix, because you never know depth, injuries, and this is a long football season. Yeah, Tylen Hines, he's got some speed. 5'7", freshman. Shager fires over the middle, and it is caught. And that is complete to Dior Scott. And that's going to move the chains. Red zone visit here for Hawaii. So now what they are looking for is just see if they can finish with some momentum, finish with some positivity going into what is going to be a daunting road trip at yeah. the big house next week. Execution, you know, continued inspiration, enthusiasm, believing in each other, believing in your coaches, believing in the game plan, and just execute. Oh, it's all fundamentals from here on out. Shager rolling, and he's gonna run with it. And he's gonna get inside the five. He's gonna spin forward, loses the football at the last moment, but he will be ruled down at the rolling one. Rolling on the field, the runner was down prior to the fumble. First down. He's getting up, shaking that shoulder, that arm. I think he does go down short of the end zone. Ooh, awfully close. That was awfully close. This might be a better angle. Does the ball come out before he is down? It looks like that. I think that leg is down. That, that uh, right glute <laughs> got down to the turf before the ball popped out. Step, glute. Here is Parson. Oh, he is stuffed immediately. <laughs> Access denied. Lorenzo Hernandez saying, uh-uh. When's the last time you saw a DT with number zero? <laughs> yeah, the numbers are, are, are a little trippy here uh, with this Western Kentucky squad. That's an athlete. That's a guy that's saying, oh, okay, I'm getting number zero. Nobody else wanting to argue. Spent two years at Monmouth. Second team all Big South selection before matriculating to Western Kentucky. Second and goal here. And this is Cameron Cooper again behind center. This is 12 personnel, two tight ends, two receivers, one back. This time he gives to Parson, but they were almost engaged in a tug of war for the football there on that occasion. And Parson gets knocked down. That's gonna bring up third and goal, but Cameron Cooper who successfully ran that option play to Parson for a touchdown earlier in the game. Back out there here in a red zone situation. Yeah, there's some pundits that want to go more to the read option, the RPO, the athletic quarterback, and that's what this young man brings to the table. Former four-star, transfer from Washington State. 6'5", junior, fleet of foot to say the least. Spent four years. Western Kentucky would take the first charge time of the half. Cooper spent four years seconds. at Washington State. Played in four total games. Sparingly, was 15 to 23 for 143 Thank yards. Time out of the half. Throws from the southpaw side. So a bit of a different look as well from the quarterback position. Yeah, and the spin of the ball for the receivers in terms of hand placement and all those other things, it is different. The only quarterback that's a southpaw in the National Football League out of 32 teams, to a tongue by Loa. Yeah, you know what? Uh, another southpaw balled out today. Another southpaw from the islands, Dylan Gabriel for Oklahoma. Did you see that? I, not only did I see that, but Jaden Delore from <laughs> Arizona. Chevin Cordero getting a win Chevin. the other night for San Jose you, State. I don't care what anybody says. Per capita, Hawaii probably leads the nation in terms of D1 quarterbacks. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that the evolution of that position yes. over the years, uh, it is unbelievable. Give Marcus Mariota credit for that. Give Vince Passes, give Joe Lane, all the great quarterback gurus. We even have one in our pregame and our halftime and our postgame show, Jordan Halle <laughs> from the island of Maui, <laughs> former quarterback. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. We're surrounded. Third and goal here. Cooper remains the quarterback. 
And he's going to run it. And he's going to stumble. Looked like the turf monster may have been the one credited with that one. Cooper had a lane, it appeared, but couldn't quite keep his feet under him. Had Jordan Johnson running with him to that side. As soon as we talk about his athleticism, he finds the turf monster. Well, with under a minute ticking down here in this game, Cameron Cooper and the Bows going forward on fourth and goal. They're going to run the option again. He's going to keep it again. Does he get across the plane? Ruling on the field, the runner was tackled short of the, short of the end zone. Ball go over downs. First down. Denied just short, according to the officials. Same play as the play they scored earlier in the game. Unbalanced line, guard and tackle. Option in the end man on the line of scrimmage. Well defended by Western Kentucky. It looks like the correct call, at least from the first couple of angles we've seen. And so Western Kentucky will take over on downs. They're backed up. So they're going to have to get some positive yardage to be able to get into victory formation. But Western Kentucky will improve to 2-0 and on this young season. Hawaii will fall to 0-2. Of course, Hawaii has that trip to Michigan next week. Hilltoppers are at Indiana two weeks from now. So the work continues here for Timmy Chang and this coaching staff. Another lopsided defeat. But another game that was filled with peculiar twists and turns. That will have you scratching your head. You see the two coaches embracing. They have a history together at this university. And, and similar in age, even though Tyson's been coaching a lot longer, been a head coach, Remember, he was a 22-year-old ball game graduate assistant when Timmy Chang was playing football here. Yeah. Well, that Helton family, right? You got Dad, uh, who has coached forever, Kim, and then you also have Clay Helton, coached at USC for a bunch of years, now at Georgia Southern, whose son is one of the quarterbacks on the roster That's here. Right. That's the dad right. comes around to practice, and it's a family affair. 49-17. Chris is Brown, Nate Lawa, those guys all know Coach Helton. And so the Hilltoppers get out of here with a victory. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the game. Let's take a look. For the toppers, Austin Reed, 22 of 31 for 271 yards, three touchdowns. Also had a rushing TD through one interception. Pene Pavihi, six tackles, one solo tackle. Did get dinged up a couple of times. So keep a close eye on Pene here this week. But Timmy Chang and the Rainbow Warriors once again, walking off of Clarence T.C. Ching Athletic Complex Field in defeat. We will see them back here in a couple weeks against Duquesne, still seeking that first win, depending on what happens at Michigan. Uh, but the work will, as mentioned, continue here for this team, Rich. How do they go about trying to, once again, build this thing up after a loss like this for the second consecutive week? Well, obviously, they're going to evaluate this film. It was, to me, more on the offense. But this is a team loss. As Timmy Chang and that staff talked about after last week's loss, they all took responsibility for it. Jacob Euro took responsibility. Timmy Chang did. This is They're in this thing together. And the only way to get out of this is to continue to believe, continue to work on fundamentals, decide who the quarterback is, get him the reps necessary, and... Uh, Hopefully they can get some of these players back that are a little nicked up and banged up. Well, Michigan took care of business against Colorado State, uh, coached by the guy who Timmy Chang previously worked with, Jay Norvell, when they were at Nevada. Uh, they will have their turn, will the Rainbow Warriors, next week in Ann Arbor. That will do it for us. Don't forget about the post-game show. But for now, for Rich Miano and Scott Robbs, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Western Kentucky came into Manoa and did its thing. But Hawaii lives to fight another day. Until next time, everybody, we bid you aloha from Manoa. For me, living at home is very important. And Arcadia at Home membership provides that. Consuelo picks from a menu of home services, freeing her to do what makes her happy. And best of all, I live worry-free. 
With an Arcadia at Home membership, you'll receive lifetime guaranteed care and access to everything at 15 Craigside and Arcadia. It's the best of both worlds. I can live at home knowing my future is secure. Call or visit us online today. Sunday. Hawaii closes out the Outrigger Volleyball Challenge with a match against Pac-12 Powerhouse UCLA. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. You're watching Spectrum Sports. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. With new cars arriving daily, now's the time to get in and get away. Now, get 2.99% APR for 48 months on some of our most popular models. See your Hawaii Hyundai dealer. It was two minutes from the end of the first half when things went... And Dad's handmade Moroccan burgers bit the big one. So with less than an hour before the final whistle, Mom runs off to Long's to pull a new game plan together. A team's worth of burgers, buns, and brats. They were hot dogs. Mom, I'm telling a story. Anyways, with only 20 minutes left on the clock, she pulls together a full post-game meal, like a champ. Luckily, when the clock is ticking, our Long's has everything we need. Make Long's a part of your day. Friday, the Govs quest to the top of the division takes a pit stop in the 94 block. Farrington, Waipahu, Hawaii football only on XCast, exclusively on Spectrum. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Welcome back to the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex in Manoa, where... Western Kentucky improved the 2 0 on the young season with a 49 17 victory over the host Rainbow Warriors as the University of Hawaii football team falls to 0 2 here in 2022. How's it going, everybody? Rob DeMello joined by Jordan Helle and Kovika Hallams. And guys, we entered this game fully understanding what this University of Hawaii football team here is in the process of. 53 new players, 10 new assistant coaches, a new head coach, first time head coach in Timmy Chang, 13 new starters. With that being said, I think around the state, everyone just wanted to see improvement following a 63 to 10 loss to Vanderbilt. As you walk away now here with a 49-17 loss to Western Kentucky, has this University of Hawaii football team improved at all, Jordan Helley? Yeah, I think in some areas, right? I think defensively we saw some moments from this group, even though, hey, yeah, they end up giving up the 49 points, albeit one of those coming off of a pick six from the offense. And so this is a group that I think at times stiffened up a little bit. They were on the field far too much, and that has to do with, I think, the offense not being able to sustain drives. I think we saw some regression in some areas as well. I think the offensive line didn't have as good a game as we saw last week against Vanderbilt. That may be an area of concern. But in the second half, we saw the running game get going a little bit, not just with Deidre Parse, but with Najee bryant lele which I think is something that they may have found in a nice little complimentary backfield could, you know, hopefully lead to more production through the ground game. The Rainbow Warriors entered this game as 16-point underdogs to Western Kentucky, a team that has been successful here in numerous seasons under Tyson Helton, going to three straight bowl games here in his fourth season with the program. The University of Hawaii now the opposite of continuity. Kavika Hallams, your biggest takeaway from this loss, 49-17 to the Hilltoppers. You know, first of all, the, the fans need to understand that this is a good football team. Western Kentucky's a good football team. They were successful last year as a football team. And their coach, Tyson Helton, has been a successful coach everywhere he's coached up to this rank as a head coach. He's a guy that's turned programs around. He's mentored excellent quarterbacks. He has a great one today in Austin Reed, who had four total touchdowns, three through the air, one on the ground. And he's a type of complete package. But he's also a product of that system that's been put in place by a new coach that has been given those four years. And this is his, being his fourth year is doing a great job of rebuilding that that program that's something that i think timmy will learn from and patience for hawaii fans to understand it's going to be a process because they lost to a, a really good team tonight joey yellen started this game at 
quarterback for the Rainbow Warriors in the second quarter. He was replaced by last week's starter, Braden Shager, who goes 22 of 33 for 230 yards passing. 11 incompletions on the night, but four of those incompletions go for interceptions. And, and obviously, as we've seen this season, when things go bad, things go really bad for the University of Hawaii offense. Yeah, you know, they've, they've been the victim of some unfortunate bounces, but they also have kind of shot themselves in the foot on a couple of occasions. The two first half interceptions, terrible decisions by Shaker. He'll want those back, as you see there. And then there are a couple of bad bounces, right? You, we saw that one there on a, what would have been a fourth down conversion. This one, you kind of chalk it, but actually worked out in Hawaii's favor because this was fourth down as well. It's a decent throw, gave the receiver a shot in Phillips there, uh, but it ended up being, you know, 30 yards gaining field position because it was an interception on fourth down. The fumble there late after the kickoff return. It, it, it's just one of those things where Hawaii's got to get better at taking care of the football, right? They cannot continue to do this, put their defense kind of behind the eight ball while the defense on the end there and only has one takeaway through two games as well. And that is, you know, the, the turnover margin is, is just uh, really tilted in the wrong direction for the University of Hawaii at this point. And Kavika, obviously there's a lot to talk about in this game, but looking forward, there's that question, right, as far as the quarterback position. We talked about in the pregame show where if you have three quarterbacks, you have zero quarterbacks. Moving forward, Braden Shager obviously unable to lead this team to a victory, but when he goes 22-33, or 33, there are flashes of being able to run this Ian Shoemaker offense. Do you feel moving forward that that conversation needs to be put to bed and Braden Shager just needs to understand that he's the quarterback moving forward? Is that the sense you get? I totally agree, and it's because of the fact that he, during this last drive, I like when he took off uh, the way he threw the ball, he threw it with more confidence in the second half. He also used his legs to buy himself a lot more time to complete balls, and that run he had near the end where he actually, boom, he almost got uh, fumbled that football away, but they called him down. He's showing him the toughness, showing the toughness. I think he's the guy, he's a sophomore. I think that's going to be your guy. Well, we have a lot more to talk about here on the Post game show as the University of Hawaii football team falls 49 17 to Western Kentucky. Rainbow Warriors now 0 2 to start the 2022 season. I think it's time your mom moved in. I officially love you all over again. Our banker Noah said we can use our home equity for a nice Ohana unit. Need a Noah in your life? Get your banker at ASBHawaii.com. Tired of the usual boring dates? Why not some fun, friendly competition instead? Bayview Mini Putt and Zipline is a welcome change to the typical date. With safe social distancing between putting greens, get to know each other and find out what sort of sport they are. Are they one with flair or with game all their own? We've got two courses totaling 36 greens to find out. Cap everything off by soaring over the park on Bayview's thrilling Zipline. Getting to know one another has never been so fun. Bayview Mini Putt and Zipline in Kaneohe. Save water with a little help from City Mill. With our drip irrigation kits from Dig, you'll water in small amounts slowly and precisely where your plant needs it the most. We also have a drip patio kit on sale for $13.99 or the drip raised bed kit just $37.99. Just add plants and a water source. We also carry solar and battery powered timers so you can custom build your own system. Ask a City Mill garden associate for advice. Need a hands-free garden watering system? Try check City Mill and citymill.com. In a world where people need saving. Somebody needs saving. One hero could save you more. Don't worry, citizen. I'm here to save. Already saved. Today? Switched into Farmers Hawaii so he could save an average of $453 on his auto insurance. If you need saving, get a quote from Farmers Hawaii. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Call 808 Farmers or visit FarmersHawaii.com for a quote today. That's 808 Farmers. If football is your game, Island Sportswear has got you covered. Island Sportswear in the Windward Mall is your one-stop shop for all official teams. We don't just have the gear. We walk the walk and live the game. When you need real gear for real fans, then spike your next goal at Island Sportswear. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Welcome back to Manoa Under the Moon here at the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex where the University of Hawaii football team falls to Western Kentucky 49-17. Rainbow Warriors now 0-2 on the season. 
six turnovers for the Rainbow Warriors in this four quarters of football. I have to imagine, Jordan, that's what jumps out in the stat sheet to you. The, the bottom two columns, right? Absolutely. Six turnovers. On the other end, they had the one defensive takeaway with the second half interception, and they also had the, the botched punt on the first possession of the ball game that Hawaii took advantage of. And then the penalties, 12 penalties for 109 yards. They're going to have to cut that down. Uncharacteristically, El Manning had a, a, about three or four of those penalties as well. One was kind of the unsportsmanlike, which actually didn't mind. It showed a little fight there at the end of the ball game. But, you know, they, it, that that is something that they're going to – they have to take care of the little things because it's a team that I think we've seen through two weeks, right? When you play some of the better programs that are going to be on the schedule, they're going to be under bent. Uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that if you can take care of the battle. Yeah, if you can take care of the football, win the turnover battle, play disciplined football, mistake-free football, they'll be in games, but so far through two games, uh, too much of that. Through two games of the Timmy Chang era here for the University of Hawaii football team, the Rainbow Warriors are 0-2. Just moments ago, our Scott Robbs is able to catch up with head coach Timmy Chang and get his thoughts after this game. Well, coach, give me your thoughts on uh, tonight's game. It's a tough one. You know, uh, you know I, thought, um, I thought we played pretty well. I think we make way too many mistakes, you know. Uh, turnovers. I don't know what the number is off the top of the head. You know, um, you know, another another turnover for six. Penalties. You know, we gotta play more disciplined football to win. It's hard to win FBS games, and and the margin of error is very small. And these guys and us as coaches gotta understand, and we gotta put ourselves in great position, and just you know keep fighting. Is the quarterback position still up for grabs? Oh, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna go watch the film. Thanks, coach. Thank you, guys. That's head coach Timmy Chang here for the University of Hawaii football team. Kavika Hallam's hearing coach after this 49-17 loss to Western Kentucky. Uh, what, what do you take away from that? You know, I take a lot of things that he actually didn't say. I look at the emotion that he puts into that comment, and you can you can sense that 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 just the uh, drive to make this program where he wants to be and understanding it's going to be a process, wanting to say the right things, but you can clearly see the hurt that he's feeling right now and the the, the coaching staff that needs to go ahead and regulate everyone back at that practice from the first player to the 100 player on this football team to make sure they understand that we are in this still together. And he was still not sold on the quarterback publicly, but I like the fact that that emotion that he's showing tells me a lot that He's going to fix it to be patient with this with this new head coach and see what the team how the team responds next week. Jordan. Yeah, and he, he's been very candid, right? And even in, in talking to us during the week preparing for this about self evaluating. And, and I think that is something that the coaching staff is going to own the fact that, hey, we cannot turn over the football and we cannot commit that many penalties, as he pointed out. And then the quarterback situation, right? I, I think it's fair of him to say, hey, look, we got to go review the tape. We got to see what we have going on there. Uh, but I think it is also telling that, hey, I, I agree with Kavik. I think it probably should be Braden Shager going forward. Just commit to a guy, give him the confidence, give him the keys to the offense and, and see where that can go. Uh, but also, hey, the, the four turnovers, right? It, it wasn't a resounding, I think, winning of the competition. But at this point, going into week three, hey, go ahead, make that move and, and see where it takes you. Yeah, mistakes, name of the game here in college football. And if you get losses, you have to turn them into lessons or else your team is not going to improve moving forward. I think that's what the Rainbow Warriors are looking at right now at 0-2 on the season. Following this 49-17 loss to Western Kentucky, we're going to come back and wrap things up here from Manoa when we come back on Spectrum Sports. Home. It's where you live, you're happy. At Bank of Hawaii, we want to help you live it even more. So to help you do more with today's record high home values, we've increased the amount you can access of your hard-earned equity to up to $400,000 without an appraisal. You can even lock in a low fixed rate for the first five years. Apply with Simplify by Bank of Hawaii. It's the fast, easy way to get more cash, more peace of mind, and just plain more happy. It was two minutes from the end of the first half when things went... And Dad's handmade Moroccan burgers bit the big one. So with less than an hour before the final whistle, Mom runs off to Long's to pull a new game plan together. A team's worth of burgers, buns, and brats. They were hot dogs. Mom, I'm telling a story. Anyways, with only 20 minutes left on the clock, she pulls together a full post-game meal, like a champ. Luckily, when the clock is ticking, our Long's has everything we need. Make Long's a part of your day.
All that melty cheese you crave with double the steak is back at Taco Bell. The double steak grilled cheese burrito. Hey, looking for a reason to go outside and have a blast? Drop that controller, put down those phones, get out and discover Bayview Mini Putt and Zip Line in Kaneohe. You already know that Putt Putt is great for the family, a date, or celebrating special occasions. But you can also reserve the course for office get togethers, team events, and whole groups. Don't stop there. Top everything off with a rush of soaring through the air on our thrilling zip line. We're Bayview Mini Putt and Zip Line in Kaneohe. Come on out and play. You're watching Spectrum Sports. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers Post Game Show. Welcome back to Lower Campus Road here at the University of Hawaii at Manoas. The University of Hawaii football team now 0-2 on the season following a 49-17 loss to Western Kentucky. And yeah. That's what's up next for the University of Hawaii football team. September 10th, that's next Saturday at 8th ranked Michigan. They're going to be playing at the Big House. So the Rainbow Warriors coming off of losses to Vanderbilt and Western Kentucky must now go back to the drawing board and get up for the Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor. All right, guys, so the Rainbow Warriors now 0-2 to start the season here under head coach Timmy Chang. We heard from the coach, obviously, trying to get over those mistakes that are made, whether it's penalties and turnovers, trying to find a consistency on offense, and trying to find, as the defense plays well, the offense able to ride that wave of momentum as opposed to giving the ball back until the defense is no longer able to hold. That's the biggest issues here for the University of Hawaii, a program that has to work through a lot of issues with the roster turnover here in the 2022 offseason of bringing in 53 new players. As we mentioned, 13 new starters from a season ago. So Kavika Hallams as the Rainbow Warriors prepare for quite the trip where I kind of want to close my eyes when the Vegas line comes out between Hawaii and Michigan. What's the message to this team, whether it's coming from head coach Timmy Chang, whether it's coming from the captains? What is the message to this Rainbow Warrior team as you enter week three, the first road trip of the year? I mean, this is an old adage, right? It's trust the process. I mean, you got to trust the process. You can't fall off the wagon at this point early in your season. You got to believe in what Coach Timmy Chang and the rest of the coaching staff has been selling you guys throughout the entire time that he's been here. The bottom line is you can't throw in the towel. You guys got to come back, come back strong, continue to improve, break down your film, look in the mirror at yourself to understand what you need to do individually own up and take ownership of what you need to improve on and you guys are going to be okay but please just trust the process everyone stay together the noise is going to get louder on the outside all you guys have is yourselves to be behind as you guys move forward support each other believe in what you guys are all about these days are going to be far and few between and you guys just need to take that brotherhood attitude stay together and move forward. You know, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that because Jordan, the off season, so much conversation about the brotherhood movement and, and what exactly does that mean? Exactly. And what does it mean for this program we'll moving exactly. forward? Do you almost get a sense that this is what the yeah. brotherhood movement yeah. is all about? Being 0-2, getting ready to take on Michigan and understanding that patience must be needed because this is a team that, let's face it, is not a very good football team yet. Is this a chance to prove to the fans, to each other, to future recruits, what the brotherhood means? Yeah, it was sort of born out of necessity, right? Because times were tough, times were rough. And right now, things are a little tough for this University of Hawaii football team. And I think they'll need to rely on that, right? They'll need to rely on their brother next to them. They'll need to rely on each other to kind of pull themselves out of this. And then the other aspect of it too, right? How does that translate? The, the, the brotherhood, it, it is great. I think it is strong, it is here to stay, but how does that translate into success on the field? And I think as Kavika pointed out, some of that is, is self-responsibility. I think, you know, if they settle on a quarterback offensively, that'll give them a bit of an identity and that can go a long way into getting uh, where they need to be. And then defensively, this group, you know, I think we'll, we'll see them maybe make some tweaks, maybe, maybe look at some different personnel. And then also kind of, you know, they may have to get creative in terms of getting pressure on the quarterback. I think we may see some tweaks, maybe not necessarily just against Michigan because that's a tall task. But I think it's kind of a two, three week process still before they get into conference play where you see Duquesne come into town and then the trip to Las Cruces and New Mexico State. I think the next three weeks, especially if they settle in on a quarterback, I'm curious to see how this thing evolves 
from both an offense and a defensive standpoint. As alluded to, up next for the University of Hawaii football team will be at 8th ranked Michigan in Ann Arbor next Saturday, 2 p.m. Hawaii time. That will be televised on the Big Ten Network. The next time we'll see you here on Spectrum Sports will be on September 17th against Duquesne. That's at 6 o'clock here at the Clarence T.C. Ching Athletics Complex. Again, Rainbow Warriors now 0-2 following this loss to Western Kentucky. We will see you back in a couple of weeks here on Spectrum Sports. For the entire crew, much mahalo. Aloha.